Alrighty, the stream should be live on both Twitch and YouTube. Lower latency on Twitch by quite a bit and better graphic quality on YouTube also by quite a bit. So we are here at the last ship launch, presumably, uh, before Anomaly. I won't have time to do another ship. I mean, I could. Am I drinking AGT today? No, I'm uh, I'm trying a new one this week. Um, to be honest with you, this one's not one of my favorites. This one's called Emotional Damage. So Exhibition Drink if you want to go to the drinks. But this one's called Emotional Damage and it's Strawberry Peach. It's okay. It's not one of my least favorites, but it's definitely not in my top like five or so. Uh, honestly, if you are a fan of peach drinks and you're going to get a peach flavored drink from my link, I would suggest Brand Risk instead. It's it's very peachy. I like it a lot better. This one's fine, but I I, I drink it throughout the week because it's good enough. You know, it's, it's decent and I didn't want to waste it, of course, but also to see if it grew on me. But yeah, I would just rather get the Brand Risk if I'm going with peach, so... Let's go on Light Phoenix Tell, S Turn, Cage, Crater Flakes, Infernum, Koki, Loads of Art. Awulan, I'm, I know I'm butchering your name, I'm sorry. Work, watching on work break. Thank you, Gritzu. All right, let's get in there. Let's get in there. Vel, thank you for the 31 months. And Kit, thank you for the four months. Thank you guys for the resubs. Let's get in. Let's get in. Is it also not enough strawberry? Yeah, it's not super strawberry. Yeah, you can taste it, but. In the description of the um, the emotional damage drink, it says something like, traditionally, strawberry and peach are hard to mix, but we've we've perfected the exact amount of... It's fine. Is Anomaly coming out this month? Anomaly's coming out in just a few days. Yeah, it comes out on the 11th. So, yes, yeah, it will be out <laughs> very soon. Very soon. Uh, blah, welcome back. Learn him. And you're on both screens. You're on both screens, yeah. It's going gym. I ended up not feeling very well after stream yesterday, so I didn't end up going and seeing that movie. But I think I'm going to go see it today, as long as I'm feeling all right, after uh, after ship launch, hopefully. The day off on the 11th? Nice. Good to be a day winner. I hope it comes out pretty early. I think last time, it actually didn't come out until like, maybe three my time or something. What are you building the massive wall for? I just had some time to fill yesterday, because <laughs> I didn't have time to launch the ship. So I was like, I'll just prepare some random stuff. I have no idea what I'll try when Anomaly releases yet. We have no, I have no idea what all is going to be there, right? So we'll see. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll explore all the things, though. Excited for the launch day stream? Yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. I just hope it comes out earlier in the day. Like, I don't, I, don't, I really don't want it to be like, I think um, Tynan is on Pacific time, if I remember right, from the last time. So I really hope it doesn't come out at like 3 p.m. or something, you know. Who's on Not Tuesday? Yeah, it's because I'm trying to get some stuff in before. Like once the DLC comes out, I won't have time to go do any of that. And so Tuesday, my wife and I are going to go do that $5 deal and, deal and see Godzilla. But I'm going to go see the Monkey Man on my own. That was March's. Yeah, we didn't do one for April unless we just bleed it over. This month's RWCC was SCP. Am I getting any royalties? Yeah, yeah. What are the odds? What are the odds? Now, it's going to be even more where people are like, you're a developer because <laughs> how how would the RimWorld community challenge? Well, most of that one was uh, was invented by Smurf. So I think I think Smurf's the developer, not me. So. What the walls outside for? They're just for raiders to attack. So I think I'm just going to go for this. I might do... How is our T... I might do a round of rice really quick. Just for mood. And then I think we'll go. That's not going to be done in time, probably, but... Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll get the rice going just so we can get some mood off of, like, uh, fine vegetarian meals if we need it for the launch. Then we'll just go. That's what a dev would say. That is it Smurf my Smurf account? So. No. I'm going to complete... No, I'm not going to put a giant wall all the way around. What's the structure on the left? It's just a giant wall for raiders to attack. Another eclipse that you won't be able to see. When's the next one that goes over Europe? I know there's a solar eclipse every 18 months somewhere in the world, but I haven't looked at what the next one is. How to get royalty weapons as much and as fast as possible. Okay, so the easiest way to get it is just to go buy them. 
Royalty weapons can be sold at Outlander places. It doesn't even have to be sold by the Empire. So I would tell you to settle near a bunch of trade places. The Empire has more stock of it. So if you can get a Knight or a Dame, you can get Knight or Dame rank, you can go trade with the Empire. But basically going and trading with the settlements, you can get Zeus Hammers and, and Mono Swords pretty frequently. So that is the easiest. Just, you know, grow some drugs or food or whatever. Get some extra wealth and caravan that over to a trade place and trade for them. That is the, the fastest way to get it. Um, you could also anger the Empire, and then when they attack you, they will bring some of those weapons, but their their versions of them aren't as good. They're usually lower quality. Um, and you'll also get, like, you can get things that are... Well, most of their gear is going to get destroyed anyway when they die, but you can sometimes get some weapons out of that. Yeah, just the, the easiest way is just, like I said, just... Uh, go trade. Go trade for them. Is there a way to tell where the faction leader is? Like, if you wanted to go raiding? I don't know. Yeah, I've never looked into that. I just react to Ravad's from replay. When he plays bad, he lets you voice over it. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. For sure. What am I drinking today? I'm drinking, um... Uh, emotional damage from Exclamation Drink. It's, it's decent. It's not one of my favorites, though, honestly. I probably wouldn't recommend it over a lot of the other ones. Are capable are settlements capable of selling legendary persona weapons? No. Why the hourglass shape? Just for fun. Not AGT, not today, no. I do you like AGT? Do you personally like it when the developers snuff out the previously cheesy techniques? So I'm on the fence on it because for me, I don't always use all the cheesy techniques, but it does add variety. Because I play so many playthroughs and so many thousands of hours on stream. I like there being a lot of variety and being able to have those options in the game is fine with me. But if they get rid of them, I will be fine because I know how to play without them, right? We know how to do no kill box. I know how to do, like, I will be fine. My playthroughs will be fine. I can get to the credits with with no cheese or anything like that, right? Like, but the problem with them getting rid of too many of the cheeses and exploits in a single player, like sandbox game is partially the variety like i said but also there's some people that just have fun doing doing that that's just how they like playing the game and other people can't understand that and they don't have to understand it but like i've just the other day in the channel someone in the chat was like man i really enjoyed using the singularity it was a lot of fun it was my favorite way to play and then someone else in the chat was like the singularity is an exploit why don't you just put it on lower difficulty so you don't need it and the person was like because i just like pl playing with it i liked it it was fun to use they're like why is it fun i find it boring you don't have to understand why someone else finds something fun or boring in the single player sandbox game. So I'm always like, play however you want, play whatever's fun with you. And the more that the developers shoehorn the game into the way they want it to be played, the less variety there is for people to find the way that's fun for them to play. So having said that, like major exploits and stuff makes a lot of sense to fix. Um from a developer standpoint, but yeah, that's why I said I'm on the fence about it, so. Play right, I'm gonna send e mean emails. I build an hourglass, yeah, just for fun. The whole map is a kill box. Who doesn't want cheese? Cheese is delicious. Stop playing the game wrong, yeah. So that's my long answer on it. You either create super nice guy colonies or colonies of pure suffering, yeah. <laughs> Game isn't balanced around cheese either. Yeah, the game is balanced around like 100% difficulty, right? But where am I? What's going on? You can play games, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. What do you usually sell besides drugs? So in a typical playthrough, I will just sell whatever I have surplus of. Food is actually a pretty good one because if you overgrow food, you can just go trade it off. It's not super high value unless you're talking about pack survival meals. Pack survival meals are super good value. Um, but you can grow extra food and then trade the extra off for things that you need. If you're specifically making something to trade, to caravan off and trade for money though, you're usually wanting to look at light, lighter things. That's why one reason why drugs are so good. Drugs are such wealth packed because there's, it's so light. You can travel with a lot of it. Uh, the other thing is like textiles, right? So clothing, but again, it will often depend on your map, like what you can grow, what you can produce. And it also depends on what pawns you get. So you might have a run where you end up picking up like, let's say you have 12 pawns, six of them are a crafter. Sometimes it happens. Sculptures are too heavy. 
the caravan off really for for the amount that they're worth you can sell them but they're not really they're not really time efficient for if you have nothing else right like i said it depends on what you have but if you can choose like you, you might have a colony where half your people are good at crafting breach raid half your people are good at crafting right and so in that scenario that's a low randy roll that's way smaller than the breach yesterday that's definitely like a 50 percent row roll or something uh, oh christ um it's dangerous go go <laughs> good shot so in that scenario you might want to make cl more clothing right but uh, on the other hand you might have a lot of cooks and instead you do psychic tea or you might have a lot of uh high intelligence people that can craft flake you know it just it just depends as normal as usual One in the back, got some shots off. That could have been bad. Yeah, gravy girl got hit. Hopefully she didn't get hit in the head. I think she's just a genie though, so I think that's why. Destroy more of my property than the mechs did? Yeah, <laughs> just about. That was a really low breach raid. That's crazy. The breach raids are already 50% raid points, and then... That was a low Randy roll. That's so much smaller than yesterday. How do you heal them right on the spot? You have to have some uh, doctor drafted and right click the doctor onto the person. So they're still doing that where people are able to be carried that aren't downed. Try, yeah, sure. Uh, we have mostly masterwork in, in legendary charge rifles now. It's really crazy. I think that's our worst one is one good one. Like, if we go through this, it's crazy. Masterwork, 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 legendary, masterwork. Like, we are armed to the teeth. We have a couple of excellence. In fact, let's trade yours out. Based on bugs, we're going to fix the bugs. Yeah. Close it. Clothing with cannibalism gets ridiculous really quickly. Do any runs that are no pause and always... Specs are higher? No. Exceptions to the developer is only one that can call something a bug or an excellent because they're the only ones that know if it was intended or not. Yeah, but I would usually just rather than add new features, make other features better than change some of the some of the stuff, but whatever. Whatever. When am I going to stream the DLC on the 11th? Uh, as, the, as soon as it comes out. Whatever time that is. So that was a 60% roll. Not if it, you mean it can get even smaller than that right now. 3,000 raid points, 60% roll on Randy. Yeah, that's crazy. So it wasn't even the lowest roll he could do. <laughs> How did this get uninstalled? Oh, that's interesting. When they destroy the wall that the light is on, it just minimizes the light. Those golden walls? No. Just painted. Gold walls look way worse, actually. You once had 24 legendary assault rifles? Yeah, that is uh, that is awesome. Is Devil Strand good for protection? Yes, Devil Strand is the third best textile in the game. It's the best textile that you can mass produce yourself. Sappers, uh-oh. Toxin sappers? Something going on. Like, these raids are super small. 
Was there an update since yesterday? <laughs> Hang on. Randy, 500%. Okay. Everything is smaller than yesterday. What? Look at this. That's nothing. Wait, is it multi prong sappers? Nope. I mean, look at this. It's, it's literally nothing. That seems wrong. It wasn't like a quest or something. Huh. What she said. Weird. I double checked. It's still on the same thing. Does anyone know if they fixed the hauling bug yet? Was there an update today? What wealth do I have? Oh, I'm way over max raid points. Yeah, we're at 6,000 wealth. Yeah. The hauling fix has been fixed, but isn't live, live yet. Yeah. Are these ship launch raids? No, no. We're about to do that, though. What was the hauling bug? So basically, what's happening right now is if I... Let's say I want to haul this. I don't want them to do it. Here, I'll set a different zone. All right, let's say I want to haul this and I put a zone there for them to be allowed to go to and I set these to be hauled, right? Right now, how it's working is pawns will come down here. They'll pick this up and if, and as they go this way to go to the base where they're allowed to go, they will drop this when the, as soon as they get to um, a, a zone that they're not allowed in. So even though when you are not allowed in this area, they can still walk through it. And generally, what they would have done is they would have gone there and hauled it. So now, right now, with this bug, before it gets fixed, I guess they're working on fixing it now, you actually have to have a connecting zone the whole way. Like, you have to draw a path for them to actually take to bring that home, which is pretty frustrating. Uh, otherwise, they just keep trying to pick it up, and they'll just keep dropping it when they get to the edge of their allowed zone. Very weird. So, sounds like it's it's already fixed on the on the next release. According to the, the developer Smurf there. Smurf, I'm going to get you in trouble by saying you're a developer. <laughs> you had a guy spending the entire day picking up blocks and putting them back down. Yeah, yeah. It also is applied to hauler mechs. Last time I did an ice sheet run was in 1.1. I just find them pretty boring. Maybe I'll do one just to have a newer one up. Yeah, that's that raid is way too small. To be, um, to be adaption based, yeah. We do have adaption because someone got down during the mix, right? So we do have adaption. So wait, um, all right. I know Smurf has a calculator for this. Okay, we're at max raid points on Randy. What if he? How how many raid points is a ten? Is a max raid point sapper pirate sapper? Then divided by. A 50% roll, let's just say, and adaption. Is there any possible way that that would be around 20 enemies at this stage of the game? It feels like I've never seen a raid that small at this stage of the game. Like, literally never. Yeah, we did just have someone down during the mech, so we do, we do have adaption. Like, it literally happened that raid immediately after that person got downed. Ice Sheet's just really slow, yeah. yeah. I think most people that say they like watching Ice Sheet have probably watched... Most people, again, have probably watched uh, edited ice sheet runs because if you do an actual like vanilla ice sheet, the first few years is generally um, just a single person researching in a hut, scrounging for food, like for, for dozens of real hours, right? Uh, does adaption stack? Kind of. Adaption has a maximum it can go to. What I do with excess food, I generally trade it off. I like watching paint dry. <laughs> Make or break you for the DLC is how well they capture the feeling of psychological dread or tension. Yeah, well, like the with the parasite or whatever. Countdown started? No, not yet. Just waiting on some extra rice. That's right. Punching rabbits. Hope you don't get infected. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was actually had something in mind. I was going to do two playthroughs at once with Ice Sheet. So I might still do that after the DLC settles down. But one of the things I I wanted to do was a 
hot and cold playthrough where I have two colonies at the same time, or maybe even two playthroughs at the same time, one on an ice sheet and one in extreme desert and try to play them concurrently uh, without pause. And I think that would have been more interesting. Uh, I'll still have that on my list at some point to do. Preacher's 50, Randy 50, that's 2,500. That wasn't a 2,500 raid. Yeah, seven, there were 17 raiders, 17 raiders. Be there for that playthrough. Your plan for the first anomaly run is to make the entire map rough stone. Dev mode. Can't grow without steel. <laughs> You're gonna live on a rock, yeah. Ace banana hands. Banana hands on both screens today. I didn't see you on the other side. Uh, banana hands. Thank you for the 10 gift subs. Thank you, banana hands. Much appreciated. I'm actually thinking we should wait for another raid before I do the ship launch just to see if it's actually bugged because I don't want to do the ship. I don't want to do the ship and it be bugged or something. What was your worst pawn as far as you remember? My worst pawn as far as I remember is an old lady named Sky. So back before I was a ruthless tyrant and killed all the old people that joined, uh, probably like four or five years ago. Waffles, Waffles, they were the six gift subs. Sub goal, thank you Waffles, thank you Banana. Much appreciated. So I told the story of Sky several times and um, this was probably four or five years ago. But basically I had a uh, a, a colonist auto join me. This is back when I used rooms and like built as like a village or something like probably five years ago, maybe six even. Sky joined and she was a 92 two year old uh, granny and she was the slowest pawn I, ever, I had ever seen. Her movement was like 0.1 or something. She had like every old person disease that you could think of. Like she also, you know, bad back, frail, asthma, cataracts, like all this stuff, right? She was so slow. She might have even been like a slow poke too. I don't remember. She was terrible. And so I was like, oh, we got to keep her. We got we to gotta protect her. She was so slow that I'll, I'll draw this out for you. Her bedroom, let's say this was the kitchen. And her bedroom was like here. Before she could get to a table to eat at in the morning, she would fall over from starvation. <laughs> she would spend all day trying to get from her bed to that table and she'd fall over and we'd have to take her to bed and feed her. And so I ended up making her her own little kitchen. So I made like uh, right outside her room. I put a, a table, a chair. I put like a little zone with meals on it. We assigned a husky to her to be her pet. And so every day she did the exact same thing. She would wake up. She would take about half the day to get out of her room to the table and take her meal out. She would eat her meal. She would smoke a smoke leaf joint. That alone was enough to give her low enough consciousness to make her pass out. And then she would fall over on the table and her husky would take her to bed. And that was just her life literally every day. That's all she ever did. We gave her a sniper rifle. She never got to use it. Um, it yeah, it's, this was a long time ago. This is before I started putting runs on YouTube. I don't know if there's any clips still on Twitch of it. I remember her name too. Sky with an E at the end. S K Y E. So, yeah, what a waste of a of a sniper rifle. <laughs> but yeah, and I actually lost that run. I can remember that run pretty, pretty specific. Uh, specific. That was also the run. Oh God, the way I lost it was uh, incredible too. So, um, there's some clips of this on Twitch. I know there are of this. So the series of events that made me lose that run back then, we were on arid shrubland, and again, we were in buildings. My pawn got up, came out of his room, got struck by lightning. He fell over. Phelan, you guys might know Phelan, had a pawn. Phelan's pawn went to save me and got struck by lightning again, but the damage also hit my pawn, and I was super weakened. Back then, I also used a lot, of, a lot more mods, believe it or not, and I was using a mod back then for better mortar accuracy. So my pawn gets struck by lightning twice. We're barely recovering. And then we get an enemy siege before we get our own mortars. And guess what? Mods also apply for the enemies. So the enemies were like just dead eyeing with the mortars. And I was trying to get close to them. And as we're as we're like moving towards them, this is before 500% uh, exists. This is on what used to be called um, uh, Merciless, Merciless, which is 220%. And so we're on our way towards them with like some bolt actions and a, and a sniper rifle or whatever that we borrowed. And the mortars are just hitting everyone just as we're coming. They're like leading shots and just kill us all with mortar shells. So a uh, really old run. I don't have the VODs of it anymore, but very memorable with Sky, the uh, the really old lady addicted to smoke leaf that couldn't spend an entire day getting to her, her table and then dying to 
getting double struck by lightning and then bullseyed by enemy mortars. Yeah. The early days of RimWorld for me were a lot of... I mean, RimWorld's fun, but once you learn stuff in RimWorld, you can't unlearn it, right? So there's something kind of special about those early runs where I didn't know anything, <laughs> so... Old Grand Sky. Good story. Yeah, yeah. I've told that story a lot with Sky. What's the reason for the walls outside? Just more targets for raiders. How do you do cooling rooms when underground? There's two options. It depends on if you want to cheese or not. I'll show you both. So the first thing you can do is you can get a door. This works under a red mountain. And make sure it's not up against the wall. Make sure this is up against the wall. And you can vent up to three coolers into that same door. Now, depending on your map, you might want to hold the door open, but the door is going to disperse heat. It's going to neutralize the heat, basically. You can do this under Overhead Mountain, up to three coolers into another door. Don't put this against the wall. So you can do that. It's cheesy, right? It's an exploit. The other option, one of the other options in Overhead Mountain is to turn on the roof. And you see the thin rock roof from Underhead, Overhead Mountain? You can remove that and use that as your vents. So you could put coolers like this and you could remove this. However, if you do remove it, you want to do one of two things. You want to, well, one thing. You want to build something in that chimney that drop pod raiders can't land on. So most people will just put down barricades or sandbags. So those are your two best options. Find thin rock roof that you can remove as a vent. Fill that area in with sandbags or, or barricades those are the, probably the two easiest unless you want to really cheese it and then have that be your venting for your your coolers or whatever um or you can do that exploit one that i showed can you use more vents on the new double door no the double door for some reason doesn't do that with heat at all we tested it yeah we tested that Seems like with a new double door, what, what it says on the box is what you get. It's just a new ornate door. We don't know about the other do double doors that are in the anomaly previews, but uh, good lord, we have so many blocks. But yeah, it's, it's just literally a fancy door to make rooms fancier. So I'm just waiting on some rice to come in, then we'll launch the ship. Yeah, I know that deleted some of those up there, but whatever. You had a bounty a couple days ago, a game with a little island you build your stuff on. Oh yeah, that was a bounty. That was a sponsored thing. What was the name of the game? It was um, Bulwark, Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles. The link to it might still be up. Let me see. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Um, yeah, it was actually pretty interesting. I kind of want to go try some more of it. Uh, FX, thank you for the 39 months. Uh, Clauser, thank you for the four months. And Mage, 27 months already. Thank you, Mage. Yeah, that game was really unique. It was very confusing at first. But I think that's a game I would go back and give it another try if the expansion wasn't coming out. What is the box of sandstone for? For raiders to attack. Put the door vent on the bugs list. Or are you scared they'll fix it? I did put it on there. I did let them know about it. Yep. Whoop. Whoop. Yep. Done dust. Welcome in. I was kind of hoping for another raid, but oh well. We'll let this uh, rice come in a little bit, and we'll get some mood up for the uh, for the launch. I mean, everyone. We, oh right, we have the wedding mood. I need to go. How much? How much longer do we have the wedding mood? 
Attended wedding. Oh, it only has three days left. Man, I really wanted to take advantage of that. That's I said that at the end of the stream yesterday, and I kind of forgot. Did you see the game Infection Free Zone? No. Can't wait for the expansion so you can play a bunch and watch a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it as well, of course. Might actually stop mining during the ship launch too. We'll see. Because we probably won't need any more material and um, I don't want to have to deal with... I mean, dug too deep is not a big deal, but I don't want to really have to deal with it while I'm doing other stuff. I was eating raw rice. Uh, it should only be the ascetic that's eating it. Everyone else should be eating these. I think we do have a couple of ascetics, so... Am I living in an hourglass? Counting down the time for anomaly. Not a shit for everyone. What? No, what? Only animals go to space. Come on. Most purpose of the walls outside and there for raiders to spend time attacking. My favorite new change in 1.5, uh, the underground conduits. It's probably number one. <laughs> underground conduits are so nice. Floodlights are good. Books are really good. Are you legally responsible for the dog that your girlfriend left there when she went on vacation? I'm gonna go with yes. Turbine solar is really good because no risk of z yeah yeah batteries are batteries are awesome now. Batteries were all were a risk before, but not anymore. Underground conduits are so good. The full release of 1.5 will be alongside anomaly. Yeah. Do me getting struck by lightning. Oh, did you find one of the clips of it? Yeah, that's an ancient clip. That's I think that's probably the run with Sky. I think. I don't know. We've had a couple of runs where we got double struck by lightning, though. Confirmed underground not causing that. Yes. Yeah. So that's a point of underground conduits. Their point is... For them to not be attacked, not catch on fire, and not um, not cause z z event. Z z z z z I don't know why I said that like five times, but yeah, they cost double, but it's super worth it. It's really nice. Super happy with that change. One of the main reasons I'm happy about it is now if you make a geothermal out here, you don't have to build a wall all the way out to it, right? So. All right, uh, we can keep preparing forever. Like I could just keep building more and more wall stuff and I could just keep building or like get more bionics, whatever. Even double the price is cheap for that. Yeah, yeah. I think in the late game, even if it was five times the cost, I would switch over to it. Like once I get to the point where I have infinite steel, I would I would use them, you know, I don't care. At what point would it be wor not worth it? I don't think they could make it a point where it wouldn't be worth it for me. Well, within reason, when I get to the point where we have infinite steel, right? Like right now, I have... I could mine hundreds of thousands of steel just inside of our walls. So they could cost 10 steel per tile, and I would still make them right now. What if it was one plasteel? Yeah, that would be a lot... A lot more... Uh, Yeah, that, would, that would suck a lot more. <laughs> I was just trying to think, like... I mean, at this point, I could still do it, but by that time, it almost feels like you wouldn't care either, right? But, yeah, that would that would suck. Plasteel is always, already such a, such a commodity. There's so many end-game stuff that needs it. That would suck.
Are ID traps worth it? Not really. You can do setups where they are okay. But the problem with IEDs are that they have a, they don't go off immediately. Like they're not like mines in real life that go off like, you know, pretty, pretty immediately. There's, it sets off a charge and it takes a while and enemies are always aware that they set it off. So what will oftentimes happen is an enemy will step on it and then they will panic and run away from it. And then other enemies nearby will also panic and run away. So they, they have some uses. Like the time that enemies won't run away from them is if they're already engaged in like a firefight with you. So you could put them like towards the end of a, of a, uh, or the back of the kill area or whatever. You can also do some like traps with them where you put like, you put some cover around, they put IEDs behind it. Like you can do those things, but typically IEDs out of, outside of like those niche things like that aren't super worth. However, we saw from the anomaly preview number three that there's going to be a new IED that resurrects corpses as zombies to do your bidding. So that one might end up being pretty, pretty good. We'll see. Yeah, like again, you can set up traps, like heat traps with them and stuff, but yeah, they're not, uh, they're not super great. How do you get infinite steel? Scanners and deep drills. So uh, basically, I'll show you the research too. So basically, you want to get to deep drilling and ground penetrating scanner. If you get both of these and you get at least one of these built on your map, then you will have infinite resources on your map forever, given enough time. The so ground penetrating scanner is a um, is, is basically a workbench that they'll they'll go to for a research job, and it'll just spawn new material somewhere on the map, and then you dig it out of the ground with a deep drill. So like. All these green spots. Look at this. It's so ridiculous. We've been scanning since year one. Holy crap. Hundreds of thousands of material on our map. Doesn't do damage most likely. And it needs to be rocked and have corpse on the ground already. Right. But if you, like I said, if you're using a kill box setup. So one of the things with the kill box is you have tons of dozens of corpses right where people are coming in at. Right. And so what this would allow you to do is put an IED in the middle of those corpses or a shell. And then as soon as you... Is research turned up via IEDology? It is. Yeah. Does that affect frequency of deposits? I don't know. But yeah, we have a ton. We've been scanning since year one. We're 350 days in. And I've had four scanners since very early on. But yeah, we do have ideology. Um, research speed is very fast. But this is a pretty incredible amount. I've had four people on full-time scanning for about four years, five years, five years. Uh, but anyway, and so you can trigger your own IED by shooting it and it would res all those corpses. So that might be pretty useful, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Can you run out of ore to scan? No, it spawns ore. Turn the map green. It's, it's looking that way. Holy crap. And more resource than normal land now. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you technically run out of tiles? No. Because once you mine, it'll scan more in that area. So like, if we mine all the steel, it can scan more stuff in that same spot. How do you get that many builders? I mean, just luck of the draw or you can like, I tell people to be picky in the early game. So basically in the early game, you're gonna get more chances at colonists. So I'll often be really picky early game and then open it up later. I, uh, I don't understand the question. What, what do you mean, Vin? Can uh, scans override another over? No, they can't. They can uh, go right next to it though. Yeah, this is the most scans I've had in a playthrough in forever. Which episode is this in the 1.5 no kill box run? Four. Oh, deep drill. Yeah, yeah, we've already had those. We, we, so the thing about deep drill infestations dug too deep is they st they don't scale. So I get like eight bugs. So it's nothing. We've already had like one or two of them today, but it's it's nothing. Uh, Nyla, tier two. Nyla, glad you're still around. 32 months. 
Have you been a pawn yet? I can't remember. I don't feel like you've been one recently. Shell Bell, thank you for the five months also. Thank you, Shell. Thank you, Nyla. All right, I think we have enough rice built up. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do the ship launch. I, like, we can just keep preparing forever. I don't think we need to. What's my ideal calling size? It depends on what I'm doing. I like having around 20 to 25 pawns. It's kind of my favorite. But if I'm doing like a real min-max, like a crazy challenge, really balls to the wall, strong as we can go, I usually like getting to like 30 to 35 pawns. But it's, it is overkill. But some runs, if you're doing crazy challenges, overkill is what you need. How to get so many pawns? Rituals. On your 1.5 run, you struggle to get more than eight rituals. Every 20 days, I can get up to six new pawns just at will. At will. They're not always good. I don't always get six. But I have six join rituals with ideology. And uh, I have fluid ideology. So every time we max this, I can actually do 12 rituals instead of, instead of six. So like right now, if I wanted to, I could get more pawns. I could go do six rituals. We could get anywhere from zero to six new pawns. Already our ideology. So zero to six new pawns. And then with fluid ideology, I can reform... And then I can do six more. So if we got super lucky right now, I could get 12 more pawns just like that if I wanted to in like a day. So ideology makes it so that you can get tons of pawns just whenever you need them pretty much. You have to get a little bit lucky, of course. Like I've definitely done lots of rit rituals where it's like, oh my God, give me a pawn. But at least the option is there. Which is better, recon helmet or marine helmet? Marine helmet, yeah. The helmets are pretty linear. It goes Recon, Marine, Cataphract. Rituals, Kids, and Ancient Dangers. Yep. Curious what would happen if you did fill up the whole map with scans. Would it allow you to continue scanning? I'm not sure yet. I don't think I've ever... F well, we did a tiny map where I think it was pretty full, but I'm not sure. Is it worth disassembling ruins early and selling and gifting those back for less wealth? Uh, no one's going to buy blocks. So I don't, I don't really think it's worth it. Yeah, I've never, I've never done that. What is better, simple meals or raw human flesh? Simple, simple meals. All right, let's get the meals going and then we are good, good to go. How many pawns do we have? 23. Oh, I don't have to set this, right? So. Favorite key music track? Uh, oh my god. Valiant. Valiant. Why don't I use Cataract? Because this is why. <laughs> I never found the Cataphract Tech Prince this run. If I had found them, then I would definitely be using Cataphract Helmets. Do I have a run or episode explaining Xenogene stuff? Just got Biotech and it's all a bit confusing. Um, I do a lot of gene stuff in the last half of the Sanguifage run. So that might be the most or the best one if you're looking for a run that does a lot of gene stuff. But I don't have a specific guide on it yet. It's on my to-do list, but I don't have one yet. How does one min-max Blindsight in the healer class? If So Blindsight is not really a ideology that you go for for min-max. It's not good at min-maxing. You go for that more of either for the challenge or for the theme. However, I will say that if you do Blindsight, you can put Blindness as like the lowest um, on, the, on the precepts. So that they barely get a mood hit if they aren't blind. And they will actually get the bonus if you just give them blindfolds. So if you are doing it just just to do it or whatever you don't want the, a ton of extra challenge put the precept really low and just put the blindfold on people that you want you know that you have mood trouble on and then take the blindfold off if you need to do certain things um the healer is okay but typically in rim world like you don't need that extra healing bit uh in the long run so it, it's not really a min max ideology i would say but if you're doing it for the theme 
It's fine. But Oh, that's right. It's not it's not even a minus two mood, it's minus two social thought. That's right. So it depends on like I said, if you want to just do it for the theme or what, but Can blind people read books? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't tested that. Nunya, thank you for the 17 months. You click the button, thank you, Nunya. How do you increase psychic sensitivity? At the moment, um, I think so the traits, traits at the moment. Um you can lower psychic sensitivity kind of or psychic impact by uh foil helmets, but they're very rare. All right, we got our meals. We got our meals. All right, resting's done. Rancher is OP in 1.5. Uh, they changed it already. Yeah, it's it's better, but it's not as good as it was. Yeah, that's true. Psychically sensitive can start with a foil hat now. Yep. Yeah. Blindsight, blindfolded plays into some anomaly encounters. That'd be kind of cool. Like, yeah, maybe like blindfolded people can see those. Uh, what are they called? Revenants. Revenants. Flying off already? Yep. Yeah. Why don't they like ranchers much? I don't know. So for anyone that's wondering what we're talking about with ranchers, initially when 1.5 came out, they uncapped the butcher yield. So basically in RimWorld, you don't get full percentage of what you harvest ever. And then there was also, there was also a cap, right? Well, they removed the cap entirely. And so like someone with a rancher meme uh, that was a good butcher, you know, and had like bionic arms or whatever, could get double the meat from a cow. So every cow that they butchered was like butchering two cows, but they already changed it. So now the cap is 150%. So it's still better, but it's not as crazy as when 1.5 first came out. All right, let's do it. Uh, shoe, do the shoe. Thank you for the brand new Twitch Prime sub. Thank you, shoe. Yeah, they changed the cap already. Yeah, I couldn't believe when I read that you could recruit Unwavering. Yeah, that's crazy. And then I made the joke. So for anyone that wasn't there, if you watch my uh, Anomaly Preview 3 video, it's up on YouTube on the live tab. I made a joke during it. I was like, I can just see the comments now. People are like, oh, they put they put Unwavering in the base game and then they sell you a DLC to get rid of it. You can turn Unwavering off in the options, even in the base game. But I made that joke about that and I got a bunch of comments like that. A lot of them were just joking around with the video. But it, it definitely did uh, it did get some people. <laughs> What's the huge block on the top left? That's just for raiders to to attack. Oh, it's an eclipse. I thought for a second a toxic fallout had happened. Recommended armor setup on their range ponds. So basically you want to get button down shirt, flak vest, pants. Uh, either duster or cape, as long as you're on a, not a super cold map. And then whatever the best helmet is you can get. That's the baseline. So, flak vest is basically like marine armor for the chest. You're basically trying to protect mostly the insta-kill points. The head and the torso. So, the most important thing to get is flak vest and the best helmet you can get. From there, like button-down shirt protects the limbs a little bit more than other shirts. Pants, obviously, for the legs. Flak pants, unfortunately, generally aren't worth it. Now, from there, that's actually oftentimes stronger than marine armor, depending on the quality. Well, stronger it's stronger than recon armor, for sure, and then stronger than marine armor, depending on quality. Now, the thing about marine armor and cataphract, they are better, but they also hit speed. So your pawns are going to be slower uh, wearing those. So you got to keep that in mind as well. But that's the basics of it. Like right here is a good example. There is a masterwork marine armor and some of our people are still wearing legendary flak vests instead. Yeah, and then obviously whatever the best material you have to make them. Are skin glands worth it? They're fine. They're like an, an addition to, right? So as long as you can deal with the downsides of the of the skin glands, it's fine. Cover corners of walls or corners of viable anti-raid strategy to increase the cover of attackers and shootouts. Uh, maybe. I'm not going to worry about it, but you mean like so they don't get cover here? Like fill that entire area in? Yeah, we could do that. I'm not going to worry about it, though. If if you attack a caravan, will they attack you or go away when they become enemies? They'll attack you. 
Outdoor lights be used for plants, the sun lamps. Sun lamps are specifically for plants, yeah. Sun lamps are the only thing that the only lights in the base game that grow plants, yep. That grow crops, I should say. Legendary Master Cataphract, worth it getting for everyone in the late game? Absolutely, yeah. Cataphract. So the only downside Cataphract is incredibly strong. It's like borderline overpowered strong. It's it's incredibly good. The only downside is it hits your speed, your movement speed. But if you're at the point that you can mass out Cataphract, then you can get Bionic Legs, right? You, you can get Go Juice. You can get things to, to deal with it. So I would say it's pretty much always worth it in that stage of the game. And Concrete is so OP. Love that new feature. That was 1.3, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting that so many people yesterday was like, oh yeah, I forgot they added Die in 1.4. No, that was... was that was the ideology. Why am I building very thick walls just for raiders to hit? All right, let's uh, let's get mood. Or, um, man, I wish I had I had that wedding mood. Uh, let's get our schedules switched over to biphasic at least, and then we'll we'll get going. I want to do triphasic. I'll have one person on triphasic. That way I can copy and paste it to everyone else if I really... If things are really bad with mood, I don't think we'll have that issue, but... But we'll see. And then... We'll just put these on a... Um, uh, it's not the best biphasic that we can do, but too lazy to redo the things that I just clicked, so. I changed my mind. I'm going to do it differently. <laughs> Alright. Um, I still, actually, I still want them to do stuff together. I don't know how much recreation I want to do it. Let's see. We're on a, a air shrubland, right? So this is... I could try to do it to where they're actually up in the... Um, why is melee sleeping 12 hours? They're not. That's not how schedules work. Uh, Exclamation SCH will tell you more. This does not force them to sleep 12 hours. But Exclamation SCH will explain it. There's a timestamp for biphasic and triphasic if you want. So... I would, uh, I would suggest checking that out first off. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I will just go triphasic. Yeah, screw it. All right, I changed my mind. Let's just make sure mood is good. I might change this for people that are cooking. All right. What would you like for cleaning biocoded? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think we need cleaning off biocoded, but. What mods do I think are essential? Well, I hardly use any mods, so asking me that, I it's kind of a cop out because I'll say P music in no pause, but yeah. Add books thing for the schedule. Yeah, I would like that too, but it looks like they're just keeping them in the assigned instead. way to deal with sappers is so it depends on if you want to cheese them or not so sappers try to avoid line of sight of powered turrets so for instance if i put powered turret line of sight in this playthrough if i put turrets in every single spot aside from the line of sight didn't hit from here straight to the base all sappers would always go in this spot up here and then i could just have like a kill area up there to kill them so if you want to cheese them they're trying to avoid turret, power turret line of sight within reason. All right, I think mood is good. Don't think we need to scan anymore. 
So I'm going to turn anyone that doesn't get a mood increase from scanning off. So anyone with a passion will keep, but we don't need more scans. Okay. All right. I think we are good. Start that ship. Is there a link to my ideology? There it is. Dreaming Max. Uh, Ro, thank you for the 24 months. Thank you, Ro. All right, let's start that ship. Here we go. For 15 days, we'll get constant raids. If the first raid comes and it's very small, we're just going to reload the game and see if that fixes it. 15 days of raids. All right, let's do it. So we've had really brutal ship launches where we get like 25 raids, and then we've gotten ship launches where we get like 15 raids. We've had everything in between. Let's see what we get this time. Last DLC should have been called Mechanoid. This one should have been called Weird. <laughs> Never know if you, is there a way to paint or dye the clothes upon wares? Yes, but you have to do it manually without a mod. So to do it, you need to... Where is it? The styling bench? Styling station. So under the ideology build thing, you build a styling station. I'll show you. We got the materials, why not? So now, like, skulls? Change style. And then... You can go to their apparel color. Set to favorite color. And now, they're going to come here and change that if they have the die to do so. And now, Skulls is going to have a slight mood increase. Uh, ooh, that's a big first raid. Should be fine, honestly. They're going to split up so much. Fine. Yeah, there is a mod that does it automatically if you want. So now, Skulls here has an additional plus one. So that is full raid points, yeah. <laughs> that's full raid points right there. 19 centipedes, that's actually a big roll. 19 centipedes, seven lancers, three centurion, two scythers. Is that one militor in there, one militor? Will DLC integrate with saves? I have no idea. In the, previously they have, but yeah, I don't know about anomaly. Sona to an anime girl for perhaps boosted views. <laughs> uh, no plans at this time. The architect tab is so small without a bunch of mods. Yeah. The Militor. I'm doing my part. I'm helping. Oh, there's two of them. There's another one hidden behind uh, Centipede. Those are the interns. <laughs> I didn't think that one was close enough. Luckily, it didn't hit anyone. Uh-oh, they actually got one of the doors down. That's not good.
Just one at a time. Just surround it. Melee lock it. Might get a little bit of damage, but... Can't do much. There's one by itself. Basically just surrounding one at a time to melee lock it so it can't shoot. And then letting everyone shoot at it. With masterwork guns. Masterwork. I mean, they're killing way faster than when I have assault rifles, obviously. I just can't kite. So we're gonna have to do keep doing the surround thing. Well that one got a shot off, not good. Alright, um, claim everything out here. Forgot to do that. There we go. Why is the AI just wandering around? Because there's no way in my base. They're just attacking walls. Uh, that's why I say, like, the no kill box style with just an outer wall is actually very strong and very easy to do. Like, once you get a rolling firepower, so. Basically what's going on are the enemies don't have a way in the base. So if they're not sappers or breachers, they just attack random walls. And so since we have so many walls, what they're doing is they're dividing up and like, so instead of fighting however many mechs that was like 23 versus like 30 mechs, instead we can do like 20 versus one 30 times, which is much, much easier. And as long as they don't get through the double doors, we're fine. Can you leave one alive to prevent more raids? No, it doesn't work that way in RimWorlds, no. No, you can have multiple raids on the map. You can leave one alive if you want to hear combat music forever. Yeah, I have a short guide up on YouTube called uh room world combat basics and it goes over like divide and conquer double wall kiting stuff like that here for a while doomsdays uh so we got about 70 70 to 80 doomsday type pirates okay Oh no, we're just neutral with him again? Crap. I thought I uh, re-allied them yesterday.
So we got to make sure we don't get hit by triples or doomsdays. And we're kind of good to start the ship. Yes. Okay, here's one on his own. We can grab him. Get back in. I don't know where the Doomsdays and stuff are, so. Any Doomsdays up here? There's a triple. Let's get that one. you guys have uh we can pop out and take these two another raid okay uh so this is a breach raid this could be really bad uh they are enemies of those guys though but if the breach raid gets through and the pirates are allowed to come in after that we have a bad time so we need to get these breach axes dead if they get through there Okay, pirates are coming to attack the breach raiders. Uh, go ahead and go in, get your mood up. And we need to keep a really close eye on that. Okay, there is another rocket, the other doomsday. Okay, there went another one. I have no idea how you survived that explosion, but. Another one. Do they have any more? They have one more Doomsday, at least. Okay, there it is. Okay, he's, he's about to shoot the Doomsday. Good. Oh, nice. The Neanderthals are taken out, and I believe that's all the Doomsdays. Let's go ahead and go flank up here, kill the couple of these. I don't see any low shields. Back in, back in, back in. Siege. They should fight each other, though, I think. I think that was, um... Nope. They're not going to fight each other. Okay. This could be pretty rough. What does the Siege have? Siege has explosives as well. Crap. Okay, all the explosives are done on these guys, though. We should be able to go up and pop them. They gotta be close to running. Okay, those ones are coming now. Okay, multiple Doomsdays back up. No Doomsdays up here. Let's grab these guys. Okay, what kind of weapons are coming this way? Starvation, go eat. Grab those ones. Some guys over here by themselves. What, what all do you guys have? Uh oh, they saw the door. We pop these guys? Maybe. Okay. There's no weapons that that group has that I'm too super worried about. What do you have coming in the back? There's a sniper over there getting in. How are the other doors going? I actually threw a bit of that wall, which is not good. 
Uh, we should be able to pop these guys. Get in. What do you have? There's a Molotov, but otherwise, as long as we don't get hit by that, that side's pretty good. There's the Doomsday right there. Right, uh, Zan, thank you for the 18 months. Andrew from work, thank you for the two months. Thank you for the resub. Afraid with eating without the table debuff? Why? I mean, we have infinite steel, so why? Why even, like, if that three, minus three ends up being the difference of someone breaking down during ship raids and not, might as well do it, right? We have the, we have the means. That was scary and easy to scare. Oh yeah, there's a lot of explosive pirates. So, two groups of explosive pirates. Any of those explosives go off on us and we lose. How can you get both the favorite color and ideology mood? I think it's a percentage of what they wear, but I don't know. I don't remember if you can get both. Do they destroy any of the doors? on a table is a mortal sin. <laughs> uh, C2, thank you for the 14 months that you C2. Catch the live stream instead of the VOD. Nice, nice. Thank you, thank you. From a symbol or something or just a random decision? Just random, just for fun. So three raids so far. Uh, yeah, three three raids so far, and we've got eleven days left. Okay. those inside parts so i want to let them go out a little bit maybe let's go ahead and clear the work area from the like extreme outside but we'll leave it on that inner wall so we can at least repair some of that if the inside is good inside looks fine Three crypto caskets have been made to the ship one how's your colony going to react when you tell them you have more pawns than pods on the ship they already know. It's a joint effort to get a brain-damaged horse off the planet. These people are worshipping. Worshipping a, a brain-dead horse, and so they want to send it to the heavens, I, I guess. Whatever lore you want to come up with. Ever ignore a spaceship forever? What do you mean? Uh, ignore it forever? Like, just don't do the spaceship? Yeah, and there's other endings that we do. But the, the raids stop in the 15 days either way. 
Now you can turn it off and turn it back on again if you want the extra ship raids again, but imagine being the alien race that finds a spaceship. Yeah, there's this derelict spaceship and they approach it and it's like approach with caution, you know, and they're looking through and everything as, as if there's anywhere to look through really. We don't know what we'll find in here. This thing, this thing could have been frozen here for thousands of years. It could be so much more advanced than us and they pop it open. It's a, it's a horse that doesn't even know how to say nay. <laughs> uh, it's all scythers. Okay, so that should be pretty easy. We have so much firepower. We could probably take these out one set at a time. I mean, I don't have assault rifles though, so I can't kite. So I gotta be cautious. This group we can take out. Oh, no reason to, there's a siege. So when the scythers had pulled them up. and lots of lots of uh Itikin pirates this time unfortunately last uh ship launch had lots of tribals and they're dividing up so i think the scythers is gonna win nine hours on your brisket oh man can't wait to eat it tomorrow I don't know what I'm gonna. I don't know. I'm not sure what we're gonna have tomorrow. Should have made like an eclipse feast or something. <laughs> oh, this totality is gonna go right above our house, which is kind of cool. Well, I mean, the Scythers absolutely have this. That guy must be tough and on go juice, but Scythers definitely have that one. Down here might be a different story. Go juice. Crazy drug. You did pulled pork with homemade barbecue sauce. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, there's a triple on the map. God. There's also 150 tribals. Okay. 98% in Lafayette. Three minutes to Kokomo. Get 18 seconds. Gonna deal with 98%. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. All around, like, on every street in Indianapolis right now, there are signs, like, every 30 feet that says, Do not stop on the street to watch the eclipse. <laughs> they're just everywhere. Hundreds and hundreds of signs. Uh, quest been on wealth or raid points? Uh, raid points. But they're, they're different, because the, the stars are basically m multiplying your raid points, kinda. Statewide emergency. Yeah, I'm going nowhere tomorrow. Nowhere. Do not stop on the street to read the sign. Yeah. <laughs> Hear about it last few days. You have to work a half day. Here in Indianapolis, they've they've closed all schools for Monday. Like, pretty much everything is shut down. Shut down school. Oh, right, right. So you do work for school, but your support staff got you. Uh, Wit, thank you for the 13 months. And Felgen, thank you for the 15 months. Thank you, Wit. Thank you, Felgen. 
You drive for a living, so work tomorrow's gonna be fun. What area of the country you're driving in? Yeah, be careful. Enemy of my enemy is my friend, yeah. <laughs> that is right. This is nice. Scythers are doing work. I can't believe they've... Well, I mean, it is just tribals, right? I was gonna say, I can't believe they've done so well, but... Oh god, those guys have food poisoning. Forgot, I forgot you had food poisoning. Get in. <laughs> I think Emerald Queen has food poisoning as well. Yep. Freaking food poisoning. Oh, pretty lucky there. Thank goodness for Plasteel. Oh, they beat all the Scythers. All right, so who has food poisoning and who doesn't? Let's grab all you guys and get you in this room and then click you over here. And whoever's going slow, I'll undraft. You guys, you guys. That's a lot of tribals left, man. I was probably wondering what the craft's going on. There's like some Scooby-Doo action. They see a highly trained group of super soldiers go in one door, then pop out of another door behind them and shoot them. <laughs> All right, so far a lot of the raids have fought each other, so that's nice. What happens to bleed out? Yeah, I didn't want to have to repair too much of the wall. Find a park or something to go to for the first clip. Yeah, they're expecting a lot of people to be here. What is a food hopper? A food hopper is what connects to a nutrient paste dispenser to give it raw ingredients to make paste. Benny Hill theme song is playing while super soldiers pop out <laughs> of different doors and shoot them. <laughs> yeah. They can't hear you behind the door repairing. That's not, yeah. There's sparks flying out of the door. Someone's back there welding, and they're just like, huh, that's weird. Let's try the next one. What will cause the enemies to balloon out of your shotgun kill tunnel? Unpowered turret doored outside the entrance. Sometimes they still push through the melee blockers. You'd have to post the screenshot or video in my Discord, because there's so many things that can go wrong. Um, do you have a powered turret that they can path to? Do you have a pathable powered turret? That's the most common. Are they actually getting collision on the... Unpowered turret is the door of the unpowered turret facing where they're entering so that they get collision before they enter. Like, there's so many little things. Um, but if you want to post a screenshot or a clip or something of what's going on with yours in Discord, we'll look at it and, and let you know. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, the Airbnb map or whatever. Yeah, yeah I saw that. The mole tactic. That's right. <laughs> you normally run well the thing is this setup is like look i have a masterwork um uh, marine armor two of them what they're wearing is better than that so that's what i'm saying like a lot of times just it depends on quality but a lot of these people are wearing legendary gear sets so it ends up being better defensively than these marine armors so like i'm not forcing them not to wear them they're wearing the best armor that they can wear at the moment. So it just depends on quality. But yeah, some of these actually have like, you know, le legendary flak and legendary everything. And so that ends up being better. Now, Cataphract is pretty much always better. I mean, I, I've i never seen like awful Cataphract. <laughs> Maybe it's not at that level, but Cataphract is pretty much always better. But we didn't get to Cataphract in this one. We just didn't find the tech prints. Can I show someone's mood? Sure. Psychite T12, gorgeous environment 15, luxury, luxuriantly comfortable 10, recreation 10, 
Unbelievably impressive wreck and dining, 14. Arcus style surroundings, five. Spacious interior, five. Five meal, five. High life, three. Unbelievably impressive barracks, three. Opinion of their husband, uniform thoughts, three. Charge rifle, three. Happy youngsters, two. Button down shirt, two. I get people sometimes that come in and are like, wait, is a disturbed sleep a problem in this setup? Yeah, it's really bad. This person's gonna have a breakdown over sleeping in a barracks at any moment. It's a big problem. It only, it caps out at minus three and it's nothing. But wouldn't it be better to have rooms? Well, I mean, their mood is literally maxed. Ah, uh, that's not true. It's only at 98%. Only at 98%. Yeah, just let me know, um, Coo Whip, Coo Whip. I always think of Stewie when I hear that. I haven't watched Family Guy in friggin' 10 plus years, but that's still who I think of. Coo Whip. Your people are too happy to be living in concrete land. <laughs> Problem is people with crippling addictions. That's one reason I like Psychite T so much. Psychite T is not dangerous. You can have your high life people be addicted to it and it's not a big deal. Sappers. It's something with sappers. What is going on with sappers? Look at this. It's sappers specifically. I'm going to have to give this uh, save file over to like... Smur for the developers or something. Like, what the crap? Sappers specifically are tiny. And that's the only ray type that's tiny. I don't know what's going on. And it wasn't like that yesterday. Or when was the last time we had sappers? Two two streams ago. It wasn't like that. That was fast. Yeah, that was nothing. I don't understand. That's really weird. And we don't have adaption or anything now. That's why I'm saying it's probably it must be a bug. They're they're patching things and mini patching things all the time with 1.5. So I, I'll I'll give them my save file and maybe they can figure out what's going on because I have no idea. But it's only sappers. How many raid points? I don't have the raid thingy up. I don't have the mod. Is that updated to 1.5? The raid points mod? If it's updated to 1.5, I should... I'll start using it again. What are the structures outside the base for? Just for enemies to attack. <laughs> Use dev mode and spawn another raid. Just to help out Randy. It's like, here's your redo. Yeah. Sappers should be removed with the addition of breachers. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Sappers are one of the ra rarest raid types now. They added breachers. Your issue is that they get massive tolerance and are forced to take other drugs. They shouldn't need to with high life. Yeah, see the very next raid. Split raid of over 100. Oh, it's all melee. We can just go deal with this. The granny's coming. I can't do them right now. Uh, remind me after the ship launch and I'll do them. I gotta remember though, I don't have assault rivals, so we gotta be real careful. It is all melee, and it is impids, so... Impids are faster, but they're not as tanky as... See, Assault Rifles would already have killed this. <laughs> That's so crazy. Hey! Oh no, we killed him! Visible Raid Point mod is updated now? Okay. Oh no, I was looking, I was looking at chat. I might get lit on fire here. Stokes, you might pay the ultimate price for me looking at the raid points thing. Nah, he's fine. Armor's pretty good. All right, go ahead and get in. <laughs> Don't raid in chat, yeah. yeah. So it is updated, all right. He's fine. 
Thanks, random fire home popper. I didn't realize I had. Any tips on taming Megaslaws? Uh, you got a few options. You can wait until the person has a taming inspiration, of course, you know, but you can't guarantee those. Uh, other than that, if you want to tame it manually, I would make sure you are literally doing it manually and having someone go out and escort them. So you can right click to have them try to tame each day and then have a small group out there in case the Mega Sloth attacks. Um, there's some other options too. You could have your person that's doing the taming have a um, flame sword from from royalty. And so if you have if you have that and the Mega Sloth does fight back, they can hit it once, it'll light on fire and then they can run away. So that's an option. Um, also, it's important to note that when, when you down a animal and then you, one second, when you down an animal and then you tend to them, there's a chance for them to automatically be, be tamed. So there's always that option to. It's not a high percent, but it can happen. It can even happen with wild people. A breach, uh-oh. Don't think the impids are going to win this, so we got to be ready to grab a MP. Just grab your pawns like that in the fight. Hold down right click and drag. Hold down right click and drag. Drag your cursor. All right, now if, if the termite separates we want to be able to pop out and kill it i'll give the impids a little bit more chance a lot of lancers someone might get hurt here yeah use your flame breath on something that doesn't get hurt by flame great Come on, imps. What are you doing? Why are you so slow? You're supposed to be joggers. Yeah, there you go. Get in there. Imps, come on. Yeah, I see, but I can't really make it right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm so used to hitting 4x. Oh, we might have gotten some. Well, thank goodness for marine helmets because we probably would have gotten brain damage otherwise. So as soon as the imps start to run, we need to pop out. And while the mechs are shooting the imps, we shoot the mech.
pretty nice having uh legendary marine helmets right <laughs> All right. Everyone healed up. Eat. Then we gotta repair that. We have uh, go juice for you. Yeah, do that. I don't care if you're addicted or not. Best way to deal with waste packs. Uh, I usually like dumping them on tribes because then the tribes will come attack me and basically deliver more meat and leather. So if you've made it to the point where you can just have a bunch of uh, drop pods, that's what, that's what I usually do. Uh, the other thing is you could always dump them at the edge of your map and just deal with the bugs until you can get another way to deal with it. You could also freeze it until you have a way to deal with it. The atomizer is also pretty efficient once you get to it, but a lot of times it takes a long time to get there. All right, so far we've been pretty lucky with enemies attacking other enemies, so. the atomizer but it's slow yeah the atomizer can keep up with it once you're like zeroed out right depending on how much waste you're producing but once you have a couple of atomizers and you have the waste zeroed out then they're they're good from there on out but yeah typically i will just dump it on um on enemy tribes because if you dump waste on someone with a drop pod or uh, it, it'll make them unhappy but if they're like an enemy tribal it doesn't matter they can't get any more unhappy and then if you drop it on an outlander or pirate or something like that, then they will have a chance to either retaliate by attacking or drop potting it back to you. But tribes can't drop pot it back to you. So waste pack infestations. Yeah, they can be a really strong defensive tool, but really scary sometimes too. Oh, ship launches yesterday. Nope. Okay. Uh, yeah, Pollock Seeds, you can use those too. They're very rare, though. No grave injuries? No, I think, uh... I didn't even check, but... Yeah, like, he almost lost his arm. It's almost healed now, but you can see just one shot from the thump cannon crushed his arm. That one's just burns. There's another one that almost got... Ooh, their torso got crushed. Cam almost died, actually. I didn't notice that. Well, why don't I get drop out raids? I do. I have. Yeah. That's why this is here. That's why that door is open. Yeah. I got one on maybe the last episode of this or the one before. Drop out raids are very rare now. It's like 2% of all raids at max raid point. So you don't get them very often. But yeah, I think we've gotten like two in this one. We had one land inside this area while people were eating and then killed them. Gotta miss drop out raids. Yeah, they're not very common anymore i have a guide on drop pod raids that one reason you don't notice them as much either in my runs is because we just kill them really quickly they're one of the easier raids because they're so low drop uh raid points so if you get a single turret drop pod raids are pretty much like i mean they can st if you're not fast about it they can obviously still get a shot off also if you're not using like a barrack setup they can be a little bit harder but i have a really short guide about uh drop pod raiders up on youtube if you want to check it out and if you do that it makes them much easier You want to milk mega scarabs and insects in general? Do I think there will be a new starting scenario in Anomaly? I'm thinking probably. We got two new ones in, in biotech. Lots of defend or uh, sieges. Sieges. Sucks because sieges at this point of the game usually means. explosives as well. Where are you guys? I don't know why I do this. It doesn't matter.
Well, I guess we didn't have to worry about it anyway. Tame insects and get stay supply of insect jelly. You can tame them already, but there's just no real reason to. Yeah, it would be nice. If there's a reason to. A raid thing normal. Never seen this many double raids. It's ship launch. This is super normal during ship launch. Yep. This can happen outside of ship launch. Sometimes with Randy, it can't happen with Cassandra. But this is very common during ship launch. Oi, Fox! Why does my HUD look different? This is vanilla, so I have no idea. What looks different to you? Uh, Corey, thank you for the super chat. But yeah, um... Yeah, I don't have any... This is... There's, I have no mods that are impacting any anything that you see on the screen, so... Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me know what you think looks different, and I will... I have search. Uh, search is a 1.5 thing. That's not a mod. Search isn't a mod. But yeah, let me know. Let me know. You mean the menus on the upper left? That's just categorized mode. That's just, that's been talked about. That's an option that's been the game since the beta of the game. I highly suggest looking at all the icons in the bottom right of your, of your screen. There's a lot of important stuff down there. That's just categorized mode, yeah. No mod needed. Just a button in the bottom right. Why is there two PM times? One is my colony time, one is my local real time. Three factions fighting, yep. Or put random turret launchers to hit incoming raiders on the edge. No, it's not really worth it. I'll just destroy it. <laughs> I could... Yeah, they're just not worth it. Unfortunately, on the higher difficulties, turrets are just outside of just being like a tank or a deterrent or something or pull aggro or whatever. Turrets just aren't generally worth it. World's burning. This is fine. Yeah. You have 3000 hours. Didn't know that. And there's so many little things like that in the game. Like, there's so many. I go through those quite a bit. And, and like, I don't know how many times I've I've been moving pawns around where I'm like, oh, I want my melee blocker to be on the front. And someone's like, wait a minute, what's the mod for that? And it's like, that's not a mod. You just you just hold down right click and you drag them. It's not a mod. It's super handy. And they're like, what? I've been playing this game for 6,000 hours and I never knew you could reorganize your pawns. There's so many things like that in the game and there's a lot of people that don't know. Do so you know the wall for it? Yeah, there we go. There's already some people are like, what? <laughs> um, You can also go through pawns with period and comma, which is nice, especially when you're trying to triage, right? You can open these panes and go, all right, who's bleeding? Who's bleeding? Period and comma to go through. Like, that's another thing. There's a lot of things, a lot of things. What music mod? P music. It's P is in pterodactyl music. 4K hours just learn something. So basic. All right, I'll do a couple more of them. You can also click quest and click on reward preferences. If you're sick of people like saying, do all this stuff and I'll give you nine goodwill. If you turn this off, you'll get all of the, uh, you'll, you'll get the same number of reward options, but they'll all be monetary rewards. They won't be a rep or, uh, or goodwill whatever like sometimes you might want these on but this is another one another really great one is if you go into health and click on allow medicine and click on change defaults you can make it so everything has a has a default medicine when they arrive this way like if you down a uh, a prisoner you're not giving them your glitter world medicine right off the bat uh, another one that a lot of people like when i'm in menus you can shift alt or control click on things like like cook pack survival meals you see, this goes up by one. If you hold down alt, it goes up and down by 10. Hold shift, it goes up and down by 100. Uh, I think alt shift, yeah, alt shift goes up by 1,000. You can do this in all the menus. Like, there's lots of things like that. You can tame insects, yes. There's the... I'm going to go back to triphasic temporarily. We're doing ship launch, so that's why I'm using triphasic. Uh, Exclamation SCH on the Twitch chat if you want the the timestamp guide that goes over the, the schedules. I know why Hyperweave is so hard to find. It's the best, it's basically the best textile in the game, but I don't know why it's so rare. Corey Fox, thank you for coming to the channel member. Thank you, Corey. And there's like a dozen more of these little things I can show. 
Like, I've had people that are like, man, I use allow tool to allow everything, and that's the main reason I use it. Otherwise, I get rid of it. That's been in the base game since 1.3. You can right click on our allow and hit unforbid all items. A lot of these are right clickable. Like, there's quite a few of them that are right clickable, and the game doesn't tell you these things, right? So, Hyperweave is power creeped. Hyperweave is still the top two textile in the game. You just can't really find much of it. How do I get to the medical menu? Go to health, click on, are you, on 1.5, the D, or on 1.4, the default button is here. On 1.5, you have to click on allowed medicine and then go to change defaults. So click on a pawn in 1.5, click on allow medicine, go to change defaults. If you're on 1.4 or older, you'll just click on the defaults button. Can I do a quick tier list of the DLCs based on what I enjoy the most? My tier list on what I enjoy the most is ideology, biotech, royalty. 1500 hours, never seen that menu. Well, I, I mean, there's so many buttons and shortcuts and hotkeys, the game doesn't specifically tell you, so. You don't think you've ever seen anyone rate ideology higher than biotech? I usually rate it on which one I miss the most when I play vanilla. I really like biotech, but I think for themed runs and rituals and things like that, from a min-max standpoint, and what I miss the most when I go back to vanilla, because I do vanilla runs a few times a month, I miss ideology the most out of them. So that's why I, I on my list. What did that? Oh, it thought you posted a link. Long-term development games always got millions of hidden labeled features. Fun to find over the years. Yeah. I thought you posted a link because there was a not a space somewhere. How much more time we got? Like most of these raids just fall themselves <laughs> or enemies fall each other, I should say. Uh, we probably want to mine a little more plasteel during this because we've been repairing so much that it's actually going down a little bit. We're rebuilding so much, I should say. Yeah, tons and tons of stuff in the game like that. That's uh, easy to not know, easy to miss. Let's be the final run for Anomaly, yep. Did you expand the ship if you wanted to? Yeah, in fact, you can do the ship launch with only the reactor and then build the rest afterwards if you want. Safe way to eliminate robot waste without polluting the environment. Uh, the safest way is the atomizer. Yeah. So yes, atomizer. Does a game have better performance in 1.5? No. Unfortunately, it has worse performance by just a little bit for most people. So. A bunch of the people that make um, mods to like test performance and things of the game and, and increase their performance have ran 1.4 1.5 neck and neck and 1.5 runs a little bit worse than 1.4 need an atomizer 5000 UI designer never seen that menu oh. <laughs> this game has controller support it does there's also there's a console version of RimWorld so this game you really have no clue what you should be doing or what to do uh, you can always check out some of my guides if you haven't already, Tet. I just put two more out. Some of them are more advanced, but there are some relatively basic ones like the clothing guide. You gotta remember, I have 6,000 hours in the game. And it's like 6,000 hours of practiced content, too. It's not just like, you know, I'm chilling and letting a peaceful colony go through the motions while I'm watching a movie or something. Like, it's streamed content. Additional raids is starting a second reactor at the same time. I don't think you do anymore, but you do get additional raids if you do royalty at the same time. It's 1.5 live. Anyone can play 1.5 ever since they announced it. So, yes, but it's not full release until Anomaly comes out on the 11th. What's a rimmingship? Is there a specific challenge? Rimmingship is a competition to see who can get the highest wealth on the same seed on vanilla in 11 hours. The German event. 
Have we done a void run? No. Console version? Yeah, I still haven't tried it out, but I've heard that the controls and UI are actually pretty decent on console. How many raids have we gotten so far? 10 raids. 10 raids. Okay. Well, over halfway through, 10 raids, so pretty average. What's the story behind my nickname? So a long time ago, my name that I used for like competitive brood war and stuff like that actually was my last name. And then as I decided to do streaming more full time or try to get to full time, I needed a new name that didn't include my last name. And so we were going through lots and lots of different things. And then initially I was planning on doing primarily a variety and my, maybe not even only gaming content. And so uh, my wife and I came up with a bunch of names and asked a few people which one they liked better, which one sounded better. We ended up going with this one. Cat, another siege. Man, this kind of sucks. Siege, siege, siege. Remember that home surgery? No. <laughs> what are the tables and chairs for? It's because when I'm out doing long raids like earlier where I was out kiting and, and fighting for almost a whole day, if someone's starving, I can have them just eat at a table really quick and that way they don't also get a minus three on top of all the other mood hits they're getting from being out raiding all that time. I want them to get a shot off. Come on. Hey. Next shot, please. There we go. One triple is the only explosive left. Okay. So this should be pretty easy. I think he might have just used it. I'm not sure. There's a low shield. Let's have him pop that and then we can use it. Uh, it's so dangerous for me to do that, but it's pretty fun, you gotta admit. So, back in 1.4, they changed it so explosives blow up on low shields instead of being absorbed by them. So I just basically made them use their triple rocket on their own low shield. <laughs> times, good times. And the imps are back. You think the imps are on our side? Leapfrog tactics, yeah. That worked pretty well. I'm going to stop out of five anti-grain warheads. Brace five pawns from existence. God, thankfully they can't have anti... Uh, anti-grain warheads on vanilla. I have a game about skill levels and how they impact the activity. A guide on it? No, not really. Like... At a very, very basic level, six is a good break point for most skills. Six means they're pretty proficient, and on average, if they're making something, they're gonna make it a normal or better quality. So six, and like six for social, for instance, is the break point for 100% recruitment chance on arresting. Like six is a pretty easy one to keep in mind. But I don't have a guide on it. It was fun to watch. <laughs> the low shields, yeah. Why use your own low shields when you can just have the enemies? You think anti-grain warship, um, 
Oh, anti green should be more common. Yeah, they are very rare. Hefty Smurf. Hey, Hefty Smurf. Welcome in. Raise cube. Raise cube indeed. Soon it will be cube cube day. Cube day. Maybe I'll make my first anomaly base shaped like a cube. I already usually do a square, right? So just put, put some extra. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. You know? Maybe we'll do that. <gasps> Sacrilege Smurf. Oh, this baby and Vats, his mother and a world member. Running wild breakdown. Then the baby became a wild member after born. Does use beds? Is that supposed to happen? No, I've never seen that. What? John, that sounds like a bug, but I've never, I've never seen that happen. <laughs> I always make a square base. No, I don't. Literally, the last three full playthroughs were in a square base, so it's so it it's always obvious to me. And, it, and nothing against you because I have so many runs, but we did a single phase run, a long one, over the course of a month, where I had a giant ornate base inside of a mountain with like eight royal bedrooms that were huge and various shapes and gold and all this the run before that i did solo mechanator the run before that we did bow only where the entire base was a giant circle a target we only use circles that was three in a row three bases over how many do you want me to name all the others too do you really want me to go through all the playthroughs where we didn't i have six thousand hours of content One day we'll have actual baby bases. Yeah, we can only hope. Kim fuel refineries. Uh, Kim fuel is really efficient. Yeah, Kim fuel is good. Yeah, I'll never forget that. Yeah, it's just what people come in and see on the couple times they come in. Like these, I'm testing 1.5 stuff, so obviously we're playing pretty, pretty standard. But I did have that where I, um, I hadn't played with any mods in a really long time, and then we decided to do a zombie land playthrough, right? So I get the zombie land mod, we get on, we play that, and I'm playing it for maybe like the second or third day. And someone comes in the chat and they're like, do you always play with so many mods? Do you ever play without overhauling the game? And I was like, nope, no, I'm known, I'm known for using a lot of mods. Kim Fuel, right? For any base. Are you talking about vanilla Kim Fuel stuff or are you talking about some kind of modded thing? Kim Fuel generators are very good. Very efficient in general. Tribals. <laughs> just don't engage. I just it doesn't bother me, yeah, at this stage. It's just funny. Mods are even ruined. I forget that one base without any walls. Yeah, that's another thing too I get pretty often. Corey, thank you for another super chat. Thank you, Corey. Is there anywhere you can leave suggestions to the game? You have three hundred hours and console and think it'd be a good idea. At the moment, they don't really have somewhere like that. Yeah, I was I was asked that the other day. Like, they have a development bug report Discord, but it's for bugs, right? Like, they don't they're not really taking suggestions. People think that I have the ear of the developers. I don't. Someone the other day was like, "Hey, Adam, can you try to get them to add such and such to the game?" I'm like, "No, I, I don't have any way to do that." So, yeah, as far as I know, they don't have any like suggestion things, um, like that. So. I do know that the developers watch streams, they read chats, they look at Reddit, you know? So um, if you have things like that, maybe a developer will see it and it'll spark an idea, but I don't think they have any official way. There is a Ludian forums as well. So their actual official website has a forum. So maybe they're more likely to look there. You could always leave suggestions in places like that, but I don't know how actively the devs really look at anything like that, you know? DLC lets you make charge rifles now. What? Charge rifles have been in the base game in vanilla since the beta. So you could always make them. They made it so you could make charge rifles about 10 years ago. Did you, could you get the devs to add wall lights? Done. <laughs> 
there was a post there that said they wouldn't re yeah that's that makes sense too i would think the same thing that they won't really look at suggestions for legal reasons yeah yeah makes sense they've seen my streams oh i know they've seen my streams the developers have commented that they've seen my streams but not only that tynan left a comment on my youtube video my first youtube video about anomaly so i was pretty surprised by it he left a comment on there and when i saw the name i was like oh anyone can change their name on youtube it's probably just someone that has that name and i clicked on it no that was his account it had his first rimworld video from like 12 years ago where it's like first look at the game i'm working on rimworld so i definitely know they're watching my content at least somewhat Tynan, it's funny because we talk about how I don't go by my first name on stream for lots of reasons. And so now people are like, wait a minute, you don't go by your first name. Maybe your first name is Tynan and it is not. <laughs> what was the comment? The comment was, you guys are awesome. Smiley face. That was it. That was it. You guys are awesome. Smiley face. So. Tell the devs to add more cubes. <laughs> Famous movie star. That's right. Famous movie star from the... From always. Which video is that? That was the very first. That's the one where we were speculating on stuff based on the anomaly teaser image. If anyone here says Adam is awesome, we know that they are actually Tynan. <laughs> What's the structure on the left? Just something for enemies to attack. We ended up not needing it, but... I mean, it's been attacked a little bit. You don't stream because your mod list is too long. You don't think I play enough mech to know mech? Wait, what are you asking? Like, Mechanitor stuff? You don't mess around with bio mech. Yeah, I do. I, we just did a single phase run where I did like, I collected almost every gene and had multiple gene packs for different kinds of pawns. And then the run before that, I did solo mechanator where we got all the mechs. Yes, I know about those things too. I'm just not going to use them all in every playthrough because the playthroughs that I do are generally themed around things. But yeah, the solo mechanator run is both edit and full length. And the single phase run we just finished, uh, the edit's going to come out Hopefully on Monday, the, the editor told me, but the full length is up. But yeah, like, I have 6,000 hours of Rimworld content up, so just about any kind of part of the game you can imagine, I have playthroughs based on that part. Solo Mechan- Oh, man. Solo Mechanics were run had one of the craziest scary moments of any run ever. I can't believe we survived it. It's really crazy. No wonder I'm going to predict DLC prices going up. <laughs> I need an FAQ page. It's a good idea. My real name is Modwife. They watched the cheese run? Probably. It is funny because it always happens. And I people come in that are newer to the channel and haven't watched it, obviously, before, which is completely fine. It doesn't bother me, like I said. But someone will come in, like, during this run and be like, why do you use charge rifles? Have you ever tried using mostly assault rifles and outranging enemies? <laughs> it's just, it just always happens. It's just, a, it's just one of those things. I know some people troll about it, but. And some people are serious. Like it'll be someone's first message ever at the channel. It's like, how come you don't use assault rifles very much? You ever tried playing this game called RimWorld? Yeah. I like biotech that much. Man, the genes are incredibly, incredibly strong. But yeah, in the single phase run, I made multiple gene packs that for certain characters. So we made gene packs for prisoners. We made gene packs for slaves. Um, we had we had quite a quite extensive gene setups going on. Craftable, like chest kind of toxic. I don't think anyone's toxic about it. It's really hard to gauge intent in text. I didn't read anyone's message here that looked like they were being toxic. So I just, I typically try to take anything that I read, especially from people that I don't know, 
in the sense that they're not meaning it maliciously until I find out otherwise, because intent is really hard to gauge in in chat. I don't think I've ever had anyone call our chat here at the stream toxic, honestly, but these walls is too difficult to, for you to play no walls. That's right. Right. I was just saying, yes, charge weapons, charge rifles, charge lances have been in the game since the beginning. Yes, yeah, since the beginning. So you could always craft them. They're just later in the tech tree and they are still later in the tech tree. There are definitely still, still a lot of things in the game that you can't make, can't craft, but that is not one of them. Played Rim of Madness. No, I haven't. My first name is Redacted. It is Redacted. Plants is... They've at least been available since, like, Beta 18, Beta 19 or something. So, yeah, like, like 10 years. Have I ever done a run where I started with only kids as the starting pawns? No, I haven't done that yet. The chat's busy but friendly. Yeah, generally if people are being like super jerks or whatever, they don't they get they get banned pretty quickly, so try to We don't have a lot of that, so. Can charge rivals run? Have you thought about opening your heart? The log. <laughs> I have a it's not really a story, but something kind of crazy happened with log. So one of the ruin ship runs, I uh something changed with ancient dangers, and I thought it was gonna have something in it. But it, it had a scyther in there, and I had two pawns, two or three pawns, and all I had was a lot. I grabbed logs really quick, and the very first hit from the log hit the scyther sensor, and it was a blunt hit, so it stunned it. And then the very next hit hit the sensor again, which is like the the heart or the or whatever. It's like a kill point for the scyther, and killed it. I don't think I could. Ha I don't. I don't think I could do that again if I tried like thousands of times it was so crazy <laughs> and it was during one of the ringmanship monthly things it was unreal so maybe logs are good yeah maybe logs are good when i play rim of madness i don't have any plans to play any kind of overall mods at the moment with anomaly coming out but i wouldn't say never right so uh after anomaly dies down a bit we'll definitely look into some I, I do like doing a modded overall playthrough, like maybe every four or five runs, just for fun. So I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't doubt that we would do some of those maybe in a month or two. Another friggin' mech breach. This one's going to get in. We should be fine, but we're going to have to rebuild the wall fast. Oh my god, do I risk trying to pop it? I don't think so. I think we let it in. Okay. So we want to be kind of like perpendicular to where it comes in. Yeah, and then we're going to have to repair that really fast. We should be able to kill it, no problem, honestly, but... We have such crazy firepower. Shoot again. Come on. Okay, here we go. Oh, that didn't stun them. It hit the wall. Okay, we should be good down. Oh, one wasn't stunned. Okay, you guys attack that first. You guys pop the Militor. Thank you, Marine Armor. I can't believe that one blew up on the wall. That could have been... Bad time. Bad times. <gasps> what? Why I think you were dead?
Oh, they had the EMP hit them. It's so whatever. Firepower is so silly. It's it's even higher than we have assault rifles. I just can't outrange things. So we have like way more killing power with all these masterwork charge rifles, but we just don't have uh we don't have the range. Doesn't DMP damage bionics? It doesn't damage bionics. Not all bionics. If they have brain implants, though, it will make them go unconscious. Okay, it's all scythers again. If they have stomachs, I don't know if they change that, but stomachs would make them throw up. I'm sending them out with us when we were doing mech stuff. <laughs> Why does she fall? She has a brain implant, so EMPs make her pass out. She came with a brain implant. So she has a half cycler, something like that. Yeah. What is the shortcut for searching things on map? It is Z, but it only works in 1.5. So it's a 1.5 edition. So if you're playing on 1.5, you press Z. If not, then you can go get 1.5 if you want. Yeah, to get 1.5 right now, if you want it, uh, you go to Steam, you right-click on RimWorld, you click on Betas, and from the drop-down, you just choose Unstable. That'll get you current patch 1.5. And that has the added search feature where you just press the Z button. And you can search for stuff on your map. You can even search for mineral deposits. Not like underground ones in the scanner, but... like even living things you guys done eating okay let's go
What do you think about having a mix of ranged weapons instead of all charge rifles or all assault rifles? So there's a problem with it depending on your play style. So generally, it's better to build around a range. So what I mean by that is if you're doing like all relatively close range stuff, then having a mix of chain shotguns like SMGs can be beneficial in some scenarios. But the problem is when, when you're going something like assault rifles, for instance, if you are kiting with the assault rifle, the people that don't have something at that range and that cooldown warm up are going to be liabilities. They're not only going to not be getting damage into the targets, but if they do end up shooting, they're going to be left behind. So we can depend on play style a lot. Same same problem a lot of times like kill box setups. So if you're doing like an assault rifle kill box setup, and then you have a couple of SMG, SMGs in there. Yeah, SMGs are still good, but they're actually not going to end up shooting at the enemy as much as all the others, right? If, if you're doing it at max distance. So it can be fine depending on how you're playing, but I would say that in general, you will have a range like bracket of weapons that you're going to use in a run. Again, you can do it a different way, but you'll have like a range bracket that you're going to use, and then you'll have other things that you might use as utility in certain situations. But you generally build around uh, that 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 block, and part of that is because in RimWorld without mods, there are no like sidearms, there are no like equipment loadouts in that way. You can't have someone like you. You could technically have like a shelf shelves full of assault rifles and shelves full of chain shotguns, and you know, and then go equip whichever one is best for the situation. That would be ideal, but you don't really need to do that. And it's not really super feasible because it takes them so long to go and put on stuff and everything. Uh, so we got about 160 raiders. An observer. Eclipse Eve. That's right. That's right. Seal. Spooky time soon. That's right. Thank you, Seal. Resub. Keeping prisoners happy, how do you keep small prisoner population? So the biggest thing is just make their prison pretty. Give them a table and chairs. And don't put too many prisoners in the prison. That's the easiest way to keep them happy and lower chance of breaking out. Thanks, Sav. To you as well. He's unarmed for melee. Well, that's because of our ideology. So if I give him a melee weapon, he'll end up having like a minus 10 because we have um, noble weapons. Why do cleaning ponds hate to clean prisons? I don't think they specifically don't like cleaning prisons. I haven't ran into them not like specifically. How is crawling? Crawling can be both a benefit and a detriment in these playthroughs. Uh, I'm getting more and more used to it, but there are some things you have to keep in mind with crawling. Like sometimes they'll open doors that you don't want them to. And so, but they will listen to for like, they will not try to go through forbidden doors. So I'm getting more and more used to forbidding doors around crawling ponds. Are charge weapons better than ballistics overall? No, they're not. Charge lances are actually pretty terrible. They've been nerfed so much over the years. Uh, a long time ago, charge lances were like charge sniper rifles. Had like a 61 range or something when they were very first put in the game. And now they have less range than an assault rifle. So charge lances have been super nerfed over the years. Charge rifles are still amazing. Uh, in short to medium range kill box setups or like we're doing with no kill box. But I would rather I would be doing better if we had assault rifles. I'm only using charge rifles for fun. Charge rifles are, like I said, really good. They they do so much damage and so much armor pin. They're very, very good, but they just lack the range uh, so and therefore utility of some of the other weapons that I use more often is all.
but yeah charge lances unfortunately are just not great anymore i've talked about it a lot that um part of the reason why they nerfed charge lances was because uh mech lancers used to be like if there was a lancer and it got a shot off someone was usually dead and so the problem with that weapon being both a player weapon and a mech weapon is that they can't really balance it very well i really wish that they would just let lancers have the charge lance just let them have it and then replace the lance that we can make and use with a charge sniper of some sort i think that would solve the problem on both sides but don't know that they're ever gonna do that the old tactical brain removal lancers yeah it used to be crazy like every unless you had like marine helmet and in, in full cover if you were fighting a lancer back in the day and you heard their shot you were pretty much expecting to also hear a pop-up over here that someone has either died or was downed like it was pretty pretty crazy but they've had their range nerfed over the years they've had their accuracy nerfed over the years Can't they still one-shot your pawn? They can one-shot your pawn, but the problem is they're, like, very inaccurate, and they're also only, like, 27 tile range or something. Like, it's kind of crazy. It's no longer a charge sniper. It can still kill you, but it's not like it was back in the day where it's, like... Back then, it was... You see a, you see a Lancer mech, and you were, like, afraid of it. Now, if I have assault rifles, it's like, oh, Lancers. No problem. We'll just outrange them. But... Love to have a feature where your pawns would have, like, lockers put on different things. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, breach. Oh, I don't know if we can get up there in time to get the... Oh, yes, this is buying us time. Nice. I was going to say to get the, um, breach axes killed so this reacts differently to us, but... I was trying to make it so they wouldn't get the wall area. My only goal was to make it so they didn't get through that wall. So I didn't have to rebuild more damage than I should have doing it, but. Pons can crawl, they can in 1.5, yep. And I'm not sure how I feel about that addition. Yeah, the thing with, the, so going back to what you were saying about uh, it'd be cool if Pons could have, like, loadouts and they go to a locker and put on different weapons for different situations. Um, It would be kind of neat. It, I guess if they did that, they would have to have more of the raids be the prepare for a while, so you have time to equip that stuff, but, yeah. I gotta remember there's a masterwork rifle right there. Breach axes. Yeah, breach axes are, are kind of crazy. We were looking at them when I was doing the cheese run. They attack super fast. Obviously, they're great against structures, but also attack really fast. Being a uh, tribal arm of the steel club, being sent to fight marine armor, charge rifles, yeah. Uh, I think we're here, yeah. Kristoff, much appreciated. Yeah, what? Uh, yeah, I know they dropped there somewhere. It's only an excellent, so it's fine. Way safety without thought as well, yeah. If gear was faster to equip, too, yeah. 
Power armor takes a long time for them to put on. What's the reason for the lines of walls? Because it just... It's... You see all these broken walls? That was raiders attacking those instead of attacking this and coming in our base. So it's just... It's just decoy stuff. Only an excellent charge rifle. Yeah, most people have a masterwork at this stage. I think like... 80% of people have masterworks. I'll just click someone at random. Masterwork. Let's click another at random. Masterwork. <laughs> like... Okay. Uh, Dole Bob, thank you for the three months. Thank you, Dole Bob. Misfortune at 70 months. Wow. Resubs starting in the 70s. There's a couple of you now. Thank you, Misfortune. I was at no pause and limit sub options. Yeah, yeah. The question is, would I even use that? Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. For comic, a part of your Mechanto run. Creative's channel. Oh, that's kind of awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I always love... I haven't gotten many things like that over the years, but I save all of them. Because uh, I really... No matter, no matter the quality or anything. Yeah, I'll check that out. I'll do it at the end of the ship run. Or uh, the ship launch. Thank you. You build graveyards in your colony so they can visit graves. I do it to be the target of a extreme break in most of my playthroughs. I have a couple graves for Corpse Obsession. Otherwise, I usually don't worry about it. You feel like your pawns are learning skills very slowly. Or is there a way to accelerate this? The fastest way to do it right now is to go buy neuro trainers at settlements. You can get like a cooking trainer and just give it to someone that's, you know, got a passion or whatever in cooking to get it up higher. Uh, people with passions and burning passions are going to learn faster, of course. Things like fast learner and stuff. But you got to be lucky and get the right pawns that have those sort of things. Um, now, if you have 1.5, you can also keep an eye out for books that train the skills that you want. And so they will do book reading for recreation. And they'll also be training at the same time. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about all you can do as far as like speed of learning An anomaly the graveyard will visit you yeah <laughs> you need a specific tech to trade other settlements no no uh so there's a couple of things there so when you do unlock so there is a research when you unlock comms console you can then trade with trade ships that are passing over and you can only trade with them things that are in the radius of these orbital trade beacons. So that one you do have to research. But otherwise, you can just go into the world and you can form a caravan and go over to places to trade with them as long as they're they're neutral or friendly with you. Um, Outlander settlements, so ones that look like these two graphics, those two are going to be able to sell Neuro Trainers. It's not always the same ones. It might not always be the ones that you want, but they will have some for sale. And they reset every 20 days or uh, 30 days. Non-passion skills are very slow to level. Yeah, yeah. You, generally, I try to have people that I really care about the level of their skills have passions in those to, like, you know, make them specialize. But I don't have a lot of books left this run. Let's see. I have a research for miniguns, a research for TV and sterile tile. I had one that's construction up to level 12. I had a recreation book. This one's social to level 12. Social level 8. Plants and construction level 8. The stream freeze for other people? Shelves no longer blocking drop pods on trade beacons. Uh, no. They changed all the stuff. They, ch they changed that kind of stuff, yeah. I don't think shelves blocked anyway, actually, but... Now, not even spots block, yeah. Still working for you guys? Okay, good. What DLC is books from? It's not from a DLC, it's from 1.5. So, 1.5. It's, it's for the base game, you don't have to have any DLCs. Books are added in 1.5. Working, okay. Is that concrete used for flooring? Yes. Is this an aesthetic choice? No. Is there a specific reason for that? Yes, so... If you're doing min-max stuff, fortunately or unfortunately, however you look at it, concrete and statues max out everything. 
that you care about. Like, this room is unbelievably impressive. Everyone in here is getting unbelievably impressive and beautiful environment. And the concrete out here is very cheap and gets our, our movement up to 100%. So you can use whatever you want, but if you are doing like a min-max and you only care about what's important, in most runs, just using concrete and statues where you care about speed and beauty, it's all you need, but... Do I use sterile tiles? I don't usually use sterile tiles anymore in most runs. Aside from, I will put them in a room with bioregenerator. Because bioregeneration is so slow. And sterile tiles speed that up. Sterile tiles do increase research speed, but there's other things that increase research speed by a lot that are much cheaper and easier to get. Uh, it also, obviously, helps with, like, cleanliness. But, again, you know what helps more with cleanliness? Just a really big room. So, clean, like, this base, I can have this inside here filled with, like, blood and ashes and animal filth, and it still wouldn't be dirty enough because of how large it is to even cause food poisoning in most scenarios. So it's like, from a min-max standpoint, you generally don't need those things if that's how you want to play. Now, they can be important in certain scenarios, again, depending on how you play, but you don't really need more of the concrete and... Statues, unfortunately. Can I explain the way that you have the coolers? So basically doors delete heat. So you can have up to three coolers dumping their heat into a door. It even works under overhead mountain. Just don't put it against the wall. Those tables for happiness. Uh, raids take a long time with no kill box because I have to go out and kill things outside the base and, and like run around. And so those are there so that I can pop back in and um, if someone's starving or hungry, and I can let them eat at a table so that they're getting a, or they're not getting a minus three on top of them starving. Paved tiles and beyond like stone floorings, wealth is more expensive than sculptures. Yeah. yeah. Best tip for wealth control. I have a wealth guide up if you want to check it out, but my main thing generally is trade or gift off if you if you want again you don't have to play this way uh you can even do 500 percent without without worrying about it but gift or trade off anything that you don't need that isn't helping you survive so like wealth that defends itself is what i always tell people so like that's one reason why in the early game i don't overproduce food and if i do end up overproducing a little bit i'll go trade it for like better weapons better armor or i'll gift it to people to have allies to call in the other thing i would suggest is putting limits on things like a lot of times people in the early game when they get to like stone walls for instance they will do this right they'll, they'll do make stone blocks forever but in the beginning of the game a lot of times what i'll do let's say i want marble to redo my barracks walls I'll do do until I have X and I'll put this as like 50 or 100 or something, you know, something really low. That way, as they make them, I will use the walls I need and then I don't have a bunch of blocks laying around. They're just making there be more raiders. So it's it's same thing with like steel in the early game. I will not go mine more steel until I know we're about to need it to make like the next geothermal or something. So there's just lots of little things like that that you develop habits if you want to do wealth control with over over the years don't overproduce pretty much every time you turn something into something else you are making there be more wealth and more raid points so don't overproduce your meals even if you have a freezer you know um use the clothing guide that i just put out so that you're not overproducing clothing if you overgrow stuff or you get extra stuff go trade that stuff off or gift it so you can call in allies um if you want to do a wealth control type of playthrough did I play Combat Extended? No. Local stockpiles and limiting crafting is peak enlightenment. Yeah, yeah, I go over that in that uh, in that clothing guide, yeah. So many mech breaches, Jesus. Brave girl, you're gonna stay back this time. Oh, it's out in front.
kind of tax on these, I think. Do weapons count at 100% value for wealth and gifting still 25% you trade at? No. Weapon HP only impacts sell value and wealth, how much how much the market value is of the weapon. That's all it impacts uh, for, for weapons specifically. It doesn't make it like weaker or, you know, worse in any way. Okay, can we get a shot off, a volley off? I think we can. Go. Oh, they didn't even get their shots off. <laughs> nice. I, can't, I wish there was another door right there. Oh, God. Center drop. Center drop. Someone was asking, why don't you ever get center drop raids? Turn these on. Turn these on. You guys have explosives? They have doomsdays! <laughs> go, go, go! <laughs> Lich is probably dead. You guys got any more explosives? One more doomsday. No, two more doomsdays. Okay, we're good now. Lich is probably dead. Oh, uh, hit that low shield. Get him, get him, get him. Get in it. This also means the mechs are coming in. I don't know how Lich is not dead yet. I'm sure they're about to die, though. I think the Isakin actually kind of saved him a little bit. died yet. Wait, wait, where is he? Where is he? We have a rest serum that we've had for like the whole game. Who's ace center drop? You know what I That went pretty well for a center drop, mech breach, not lying, joking, exaggerating. Yeah, and it's actually because they landed here that it went well. So I'll, I'll explain in just a second for anyone that doesn't know, but there's um there's a reason that went better than it probably should have. So basically how center drop works is it try it picks a colonist. There's more to it, but anyway, it picks a colonist that's not under overhead mountain and it centers the drop on that colonist. We actually had a couple of colonists that were in here. If that center drop had just chosen any of the colonists in here instead, that would have went uh, much worse, much worse. But luckily, it landed right here because we were getting ready to fight that breach raid. And so they actually fought each other a little bit. And that allowed us to kind of... Also, them downing the kid worked out pretty well because the other ones that were left stopped attacking to try to, try to get the kidnap. Unfortunately, now I don't have any shells.
Yeah, that could have been game over. Who died? The kid died, but I resurrected him, so. Good thing I wasn't... Yeah, and you know what? I would have been on 4x had the Breachers not been there. <laughs> That's another thing, too. Like, I would have been on 4x speed, but I was on 1x speed because... I was fighting the Breachers. Oh, I know how the kid live, lived. Wait, wait. No, you're not the one that got tough. I don't know how he lived. I mean, he didn't. But I don't know how he didn't just automatically die. Which serum is that? That's the healing mech serum that's left. I had one healing serum, one, um, one res serum. Oh, we got resurrection sickness too. We might as well go ahead and use that on him. Or, uh, no, that's not psychosis. Never mind. Never mind. Just a huge breach. It wasn't just a breach. Yeah, we had a uh, explosive center drop too. I think there was either three or four doomsdays with them. Yeah. They also hit the doomsdays on that turret which helps and on the um our explosive shells so they only got one doomsday off on an actual person it must not have been like a center hit on him that's the only thing i can figure on lich do you have full body modder run uh, like, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Have I done that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, like the Transhumanist run, for instance, we were pretty, pretty friggin' decked out. Do I think Anomaly will bring vehicles? No. I, I would be absolutely shocked because there hasn't been a single hint of any vehicles in any of the previews or any of the screenshots. I mean, never say never, but that would be a huge reveal, yeah. <laughs> That would be a pretty big, big twist on uh, on what we've had previewed to us so far. Not impossible, obviously, but I would be pretty shocked. Hope the last reveal soon, yeah. I wonder if we will get a trailer this time. We have the last couple times. Will I ever do another 20 year run? Uh, I don't know if I'll specifically try for one, but we've had some runs that were right around 20 years, like unintentionally. So for instance, the single phase run went like 15 years. Uh, my first Arconexus run was like 18 years, so. I don't know. Uh, Anomaly might have a really long end game for all we know, right? So possible we do a 20 year run with the first Anomaly run. Yeah, I don't know. Feel like vehicles are never on Ludian's plans. Yeah, I haven't gotten any aside from the junk that they add to the map that showed vehicle parts. It's the only thing that I've seen. Yeah, that's true, too. The uh, Incable Violence run was pretty long, too. Knights! Nice. Thank you for the brand new sub. Thank you, Knights. Imagine Siege Tanks. <laughs> if they add Zerglings, they need to add Siege Tanks. Or they add Banelings, we were talking about yesterday. An ancient ATM and a Fire Hydrant. Yeah, and you find washing machines and stuff, yeah. Are any of the transceiver stuff like reverse aging, biosculpting, sleep accelerators worth getting? It seems really expensive and slow for what you get. It can be very worthwhile because the regeneration is something that can fix a lot of things where there's very little or very few ways to fix in the game. So you have someone with a brain scar. Like, what are your options? You can put them in the bioregenerator for two, uh, two medicine, two glitter world medicine. 
you can use Luciferium and wait. Or you can hope that you find a healer serum by some miracle, right? So the bioregeneration is really good. Age reversal, especially with anomaly coming out, it sounds like. Age reversal is mainly only good for the people that require it, the transhumanists. Sleep acceleration is good. Um, the neuro superchargers are good. Yeah, mainly that sort of stuff outside of uh, bioregeneration is there to appease transhumanists, I would say, for the most part. Real working hourglass, it is. It's black sand dropping to the bottom. Yeah, or if you have a single phase, yeah. So there are some ways, but the bioregeneration is like the easiest, most surefire way, right? Launching the ship at the moment? Yes, we are. Yeah. The steel tiles, I do like... Um, they're not even transhumanists. You can just get them anyway. It's just the Arcus style. Um, but yeah, Arcus style tiles, I really like. Those like hex tiles, yeah. Those are good. Hourglass meta. Uh, another friggin' breach. This one's a, it's a little bit smaller, but not, not much. Not much. That's what a little means. I know. What happened to the little kid? He got killed and I resurrected him with a resurrection mech serum. Hexagons and bestagons, that's right. Still struggle with the single phase, death, rest, kills, every run you rely on. Even with a decent blood pawn. Where are you guys coming in at? Oh god. guys get in here sorry I'm gonna bust that low shield that you put there friends meat shields close marine armor when it's your main armor and it's raid or you always wear it always wear it takes too long to put it on 
Which raid faction is the worst to get? You assume mechs? No, I don't think so. Uh, explosive pirates. So uh, explosive pirates can just end a run no matter how prepared you are. One doomsday can end a run. One triple rocket can end a run. Yeah, mechs are actually one of the easier raids overall, depending on your playstyle. Once you get overwhelming firepower and EMPs. Uh, and you know how they work. Like, you can still die to them, obviously, and still have people die. But the scariest raids are explosive pirate raids. Unless you're a melee god, that's right. Those mechs hate walls. All right. That was a pretty easy ship launch, gotta tell you. That might be the easiest one we've had in a long time. Twenty-three raids, though. Twenty-three raids. Send the dead kid up. He's not dead. Not dead. He was dead. Not anymore. Lots coming out today. Sending Lich the kid. No. Now we already have this. This is already occupied. What do you mean by explosives? I mainly, well, anything that explodes, of course, but I mainly mean Doomsday and Triple Rockets. But even Frag Grenades. Frag Grenades have, don't have a long range, though. But, so. Uh, Bots have been in the channel a lot. A lot the last couple days. Why am I being attacked so much? Because we were doing the ship ending. Have I decided which ending I'm going to go for on this Rimworld run? I think I'm going to do, let me, let me, let me give it a thought. Hang on. I think I'll launch a ship. Come on, give me that song. Give me the song. I'm ready for the dopamine hit. Let's do it. Space horse. Yeah, uh, charge rifles are pretty good on no kill box. News to no one. GG. Join just in time. <laughs> I think someone's dying in the background because of no pause. Mr. Ship Graphic? Yeah, no worries. <laughs> People are dying. It's a manhunter. <laughs> Hey, we had no real deaths. Look at that. Wow. That kid was the only real death and we resurrected him. <laughs> nice. Nice. No kill box, no deaths. No counts. What are those? Those are all the things I, people I sacrificed, yeah. It's over. I think we pretty thoroughly tested 1.5, right? That's what the that's what these runs were for. These weren't supposed to be like. Those are rhinos. I hear rhinos. <laughs> Sacrifice to what? Because I didn't want those pawns, so I took them out behind the wall and shot them. Or man hunting rhinos in the background. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that run wasn't anything like, we weren't doing it for like a super challenge or anything. It was just to test 1.5 related stuff. And I think we did a pretty good job testing a bunch of stuff. We got a bunch of bugs reported. Bunch of bugs reported. Trying to farm up state. You know, on the road to travel to an area where you can see the solar eclipse. Gotcha. Where'd you end up? Like, which state are you going to be in for it? It's going right over our house, so I'm pretty fortunate. The bug reporting. Yeah, it's very nice of them to do. It's kind of cool, yeah? So, definitely worth doing the 1.5 test. That's pretty cool. I didn't even really think about it. <laughs> I just went by and I was like, huh. It's 
pretty cool. Ducks. When is the eclipse for me tomorrow? I think the eclipse for me tomorrow is like around 3 p.m. in Indianapolis. I gotta double check, but I think it's around 3 p.m. GG! That's pretty cool, yeah. I didn't I didn't think they would add my name for doing the um, the bug testing in 1.5. All right. Yeah, manhunting rhinos. All right, GG, pretty easy run overall. I don't think we had any real problems, right? I don't think so. Pretty easy ship launch, had a couple of scary moments. Uh, it had one scary moment. But yeah, uh, to no one's surprise, having 20 plus masterwork charge rifles that you then get to fight things like 20 on one, pretty good, pretty good. You're gonna be traveling four hours. Hopefully it's not cloudy for you here in Texas. Right now it's looking like from what I saw earlier that Indiana and, um, and Maine are gonna be pretty cloud free, but everywhere else is expecting cloudy weather. So pretty lucky. No under mountain wildfires, yeah. Yeah, they added mine to the testing thing. That's pretty cool. Two, yeah, yeah. All right, GG. Uh, someone said they made some fan art. Let's check that out. And then I'll show you guys the Tynan comment because some people are like, prove it. Prove, prove that he posted. So, well, uh, and I'm, I know they just want to see it, but all right. Uh, yeah, we have solar glasses, yes. Minigun, true happy run. We did a mainly minigun defense on the last half of the dwarf run. Why is everyone going crazy for the eclipse? How is going crazy for the eclipse just wanting to see it? Like, it's going over my house. I'm going to go outside and watch it. And it, it can be a pretty interesting event. And I know some people that are, like, humbug about it are like, yeah, well, people don't cheer when, when the sun sets in the evening. It's not the same as seeing the corona of the sun in full, you know, if you have totality on an eclipse, seeing that around it, it's not the same. It's um, it's one of these events that is very rare, as far as we know, even in the universe, from what, from all the planets that we found that have uh, moons at all, um, as far as we know, it's, it's, it's such a coincidence, and that we live right now to see it. Like another, in a couple thousand years, if humanity survives, it there will no longer be total eclipses on our planet, right? So it, it's a it's a pretty big coincidence that we are alive during a time when the sun happens to be about 400 times further away from us in the moon. And it's also about, as far as the sky goes, 400 times. Anyway, I think it's 400 and 400, something around there. I don't remember that it can block it out totally. So it's just a... Uh, Corona, I have PTSD. So it's just a cool thing. You don't get the traveling. I mean, if you can afford it and can do it, like, why not, you know? Uh, a, a total solar eclipse happens about every 18 months somewhere on the planet, but in a single spot on the planet, it's like 400 or 500 years, right? So if you're within... I think the next one in, in North America is going to be a long time. It's going to be like 20 years or something. So it's like... Like, if you're only... If you're not very far away, you just might as well do it. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's pretty pretty awesome thing. 2044, yeah, so 20 years. Uh, Observer, thank you for the two and a half thousand bits, thank you, Observer. No, 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 it's all good. I thought it was fun. It was funny. Uh, all right, let's check this out. And Dag, thank you for the raid. Thank you, Dag. Much appreciated. Is Anomaly coming out on the same day as the Eclipse? No, Eclipse is tomorrow. Anomaly is on the 11th. So, watching the Mechanidor playthrough and drew this because it was hilarious. Uncle Slave. <laughs> a mood debuff for two friggin' years? Relative sold. Minus five mood. Duration two years. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a great part in the Mechanidor run. Another funny thing about this. Thank you for making this. This is awesome, actually. Um, Yeah, um, I'll ask you on here. I don't know if you're still here, but... uh, it, The funny thing, too, is like... It's a bigger mood hit and for longer than us wearing, like, the skin of our dead uncle. Like, we could have killed our uncle, flayed him, and made him into a coat, and my person, my character would have been happier. <laughs> so. 2044 on your birthday. Cool. That's cool. Judging by cat chat. No, no, no. Uh, we're talking about the eclipse. Yeah. The corona of the corona just means crown, right? So corona of the 
total solar eclipse. It's the wiggly stuff around the moon when it happens, which initially, if I recall right, when we when we were first studying these things, um, people were like, oh, that's actually, like scientists were like, that might be an atmosphere of the moon that we're able to see during this, but it ended up being the um, front of the sun. But anyway. You checked for Europe, two eclipses in Spain, 2026 and 2027. That's crazy. Yeah. And then the next one is 2061 over Russia. Ouch. You thought I was talking about the virus too? No, no, no. Are you playing the anomaly test? I was playing the 1.5 test. This is a really cool comic. I like this. I would love to have some more of these on based on some of my runs. So I have to, I have to make a page. The funny thing is the kid uncle selling them also being sent back to you as a beja. I know. Isn't that crazy? We saw, oh God, we had like 16 uncles during that. So many uncles. Crazy playthrough. Uh, so we're done early, but I didn't end up going and seeing the movie I wanted to last night. So I think I'm going to take off relatively early today and get something to eat, watch the movie that I want to watch, and uh, we'll get ready for the anomaly release. Any idea what time anomaly will drop on the 11th? The only thing we can base it on is last time, and I think last time it was in the afternoon. Oh, people wanted to see the Tynan comment. That's right. Let's see if I can bring that up really quick. Killing Lucy Liu, oh, and the first fluid ideology, yeah. Let's see, where was that first anomaly preview? I think this is it. There it is. So we were like, what? Did he really? Yeah. There it is. On the first anomaly video. You guys are awesome. <laughs> That's all it was, yeah. No more streams until Friday. Friday, no. It comes out on Thursday. If I do any streams between now and Thursday, uh, I guess it depends on where you live. Um, but if I do any streams from now to Thursday, I'm not sure what I'll do yet. I might just play some other stuff like Total War. Hard evidence. I was like, ah, that's just someone that made the name. And then I click it and it's, it is his account. So kind of cool. I know he's just a guy like the rest of us, right? He levitates into his pants two legs at a time. But are we getting a trailer? I hope so. Eclipse. Yeah, there's a total solar eclipse uh, tomorrow. All right. All right. Next reel comes in a few minutes. Yeah, I will be back on for that. So... <laughs> Uh, there is going to be a fourth preview. Whenever the fourth preview comes out, I'll do a live stream on it and we'll go over it. So, uh, I don't know when that's going to be though. Cause I'm not the developer. Tell by the cube. All right. All right. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Probably Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, I'm expecting it tomorrow or Tuesday as well. We'll see. Uh, thank you waffles. Thank you guys for all the gift subs, waffles, everyone, uh, all the bits, all the resubs, all that. Thank you for watching. I know it's a short stream today, but we're about to have some really long streams and a lot of them. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys. Have a good rest of your day or night, whatever it is where you are. If you are going to see the eclipse and you're somewhere that's busy, if you're having to drive, or even if you're not going to go see it, but you're driving anywhere in the, in the path that they're predicting, uh, it sounds like it is going to be crazy for some people. I know I was saying it's an, it's an awesome event to see, but just like someone was mentioning in the YouTube chat, like it's, it's awesome, but it's not awesome enough to get killed over. So just be careful. There are going to be a lot of crazy people. I'm lucky. I can just go out my back door, but uh, I know that's not the case for everyone. So be safe. I'll see you next time. Uh, whenever the preview is, I'll be on. And other than that, I might do some like little streams between now and the DLC. If not, we'll be doing, uh, I'll see, well, like I said, I'll see you at the preview. But after that, I'll see you for long, crazy anomaly streams. So.